Cyclo Cross for you again this weekend. We are here for the Super Prestige round two in Bo Magnus Backstead is with me today, winner of uh, Paru Bay. But before we get into some chat with Maggie, let's remind ourselves of round one. <laughs> What a start to the season Celine Del Carmen Alvarado is having already. Maggie, welcome. Thanks for Thank thanks for much. joining us today. Looking at the conditions so far this season and looking what we've got here in Boehm. You could say we're not in Kansas anymore, are we? This is this is proper cyclocross conditions we've got this winter. Well, it's definitely back to proper cyclocross, like you said. And uh, yeah, you're looking, looking like a very wet winter. And uh, so far, it's been very interesting racing in all of the rounds that we've had. And um, yeah, I think another one coming up today. Very different conditions to what we had last year. So a lot more mud, a lot more slippery conditions. So uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. Yeah, last year, it was Kim van der Steener that took this one. She pretty much ran away from everyone. We were, we were kind of looking back at um, uh, Cameron Mason, friend of the show, uh, was he had an in-race uh, video that, that he had last year. It was, as we had for a lot of cross last year, super dry, wasn't it? But it's, it, Boehm is on this big hillside, isn't it? So yeah. it does, it changes that, the dynamic of the race completely, doesn't it? Yeah, very much. Last year was pretty much rideable all of the way through and it looked more like a like a, a sort of a dirt criterium than rather than a cyclocross race but this year yeah definitely looking a lot more mud uh, it's going to change the dynamics of the race a lot more run-ups rather than being able to ride some of the uh, some of the climbs and uh, I think with that we're going to see a completely different bike race as well so uh, yeah it's um, I think coming down to a lot of tyre pressures tyre choices are going to be a, a big part of it today uh, obviously got a fair bit of sand on this course as well so uh, it's short sections but quite a few of them yeah let's have a quick look at the overview of the course we've got a, a map as well that this is this is the way the bohm course sits and as well you can see that very very deep mud that's coming in at the bottom of that one it does make it more of a challenge let's have a have a look round of this course as well and looking at the wind direction as well on this one it's kind of coming left to right and sometimes in cyclocross we don't the wind doesn't always play a factor but it's very open here as well isn't yeah, it it is quite exposed and uh, yeah it does make a make quite a big difference uh, especially some of the faster sections some of the the, the road sections that we have as well start finishing straight is is tailwind uh, and that's going to be uh, quite important coming into making the whole shot into the first corner is really important obviously and um, yeah it uh, it could certainly be a bit more exposed as you say uh, but I think the biggest factor today is going to be the mud. Indeed and how as well with that deep mud coming into as we've said there's there's a lot of going from 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 mud and grass onto the road last year as well we have this little cobblestone sections yep. on this as well how how's that going to affect how the riders select their tyres because you were saying before we came on air they might want to go up in their tyres a little bit. Yeah, as soon as you've got any kind of edges uh, going from road to grass to back to road again and so on, uh, obviously the, the, the lower the pressure you run, the more chances you have of, of a pinch puncture. And uh, with that, yeah, going a, a tread up so that you're going for slightly more mud uh, sort of choice. Obviously, we've got wet conditions today, so they're going to go mud anyway. But the the tyre tie pressure is really key for that because obviously the lower pressure you run in the tyre, the better grip you have. But at the same time, yeah, you don't want to go too low and end up uh, uh, puncturing. Oh, so we're down. We're seeing we've got start line images already. So Sana Kant is here, the world's uh, champion, and Sana as well. Um, Sana, she just kind of we've seen over the last couple of weeks for those riders that didn't go to the USA, didn't ride those first World Cup. Sometimes it just takes a couple of weeks just to get into their stride a little well, bit. Well, I more. think it's it's different ways of of approaching the season and different ways of of preparing your season. The guys that go into to the early World Cups are peaking to get their score some heavy points in the World Cups and 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 kind of hit the the season running really. Uh, and other riders are coming into uh, the European part of the season, the first couple of of Belgian races, and then slowly building their form and. I think some of the riders may even sort of train very, very heavily into the start of, of the season. And then because of cyclocross being in such short races all the time, it's quite easy to sort of race yourself out of shape. Um, so sometimes I think yeah, they, they do train 
a little bit hard going into the first few races and then as the season set, settles in first few weekends and then you, you see them sort of start picking up in terms of the form so they might look a little bit heavy legged but getting getting better yeah so we've got a provisional start list so we can uh, we can have a look through who we're expecting if you if you're not sure it we generally five minutes before the start thus is the way <laughs> even in yeah. something as important as the super prestige we're still waiting for the final start list because riders can pretty much sign on right up to the start which does sometimes make our job a, it, a little bit more it, may, it makes it more interesting <laughs> yeah definitely but we've seen sign account there um on the start list as well we've just seen as well milling around celine yeah. del carmen alvarado um ellen van loy some of these riders and again ellen coming into this season You've got riders in there, sort of coming to the the late thirties, like Ellen Van Loy, up against those young those youngsters like Celine Del Calman, Alvarado, and right down to to the likes of Sheeran Van Anro, who's seventeen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, she's. Uh... <laughs> been a revelation really I think of this cyclocross and probably someone we'll see getting even better as, as the season goes on but um, not too long ago she rode the uh, the junior world championships up in Yorkshire on the road finished second in the time trial she's uh, won a time trial earlier on as well European champion um, so she's one of those young up and coming really exciting riders that I think we're going to see an awful lot of in, in the coming years and like you said the, the, there's it's quite a big difference between the Ellen van Loys and, and the Sheeran van Anroy and obviously got um, uh, Alvarado in the middle there as well it's it's um yeah it's cyclocross is looking very very good from who's coming through and obviously the the uh, the interest in cyclocross is is growing for for, for year by well, year by year and uh with that I think um yeah w w we're seeing a a new flourish of riders coming through there's a lot of strong riders coming uh, even younger than than uh, Sharon van Anroy coming up and I think uh, as we see the uh we're seeing a lot more people starting to bunny hop as well and and that's really exciting i think it just shows the progression of the sport if you weren't with us last week anna k mm -hmm. she came round to the yeah. for the first set first set of jumps and helen wyman who was here earlier on in you know with some of our early broadcasts she'd been saying that anna had been working on this all summer and yeah. she told her to go for it and she did and she bunny hopped those barriers and i know jeremy and i were both like what <laughs> oh, come on anna k because you know so you know for someone like anna it's, there's there's the pressure of doing it, but there's the pressure as well, as Jeremy and I were saying last week, there's a the pressure of doing it on, on a global scale on TV. Yeah, and, and in a race with race conditions and, and the, the nerves and the adrenaline added to that as well. So it's so easy to get a little bit too eager when you're doing it and getting it wrong by doing it that way. Um, but yeah, hats off to Anna for, for going for it. And I think you can see straight away as well the benefit that that had um, to someone so close to the, the front end of the bike race doing the uh, doing the hurdling and, and actually getting over those those barriers on the bike. And you can see straight away she, was, she just made 5, 10, 15 meters up on on everyone else by just staying on the bike and i think with that um we've seen that that progression happening well, by the end of the season we're going to see a lot more of the front runners doing it because i think they're capable of in it of doing it but they haven't had to <laughs> now that we've got a rider like anna Cade starting to do it and who's already physically capable of running front row i think they're going to start having to, to bunny hop soon. Yeah, if you were with us back in last season when we were just purely live on Facebook, the uh, GP Sven Nace in bar when uh, Yolanda Neff bunny hopped her yep. way to... to From the start, we are off and uh, racing here in uh, Boehm. Inga van der Heiden getting that whole shot into the first corner. So our apologies for that slight delay there, but we are away. So Inga van der Heiden, Anna Marie first there. Ava Lechner, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Yara Castellano on the inside. Sana Kant is uh, well up there as well. So we are off and racing. If you're not familiar with the format, we have the live uh, elite women's race live. Then we have a bit of a halftime show. Then the men's race race will start on the hour which is about 2 p.m uk time and then we have a, a little post race uh, chat if you want to get involved over on the forums you can but uh, leading out here and so good start as well there's uh, annie van alphen going uh, through your picture as well so first 
Del Carmen Alvarado, Van der Heiden is there. So Van der Heiden and uh, Alvarado, the two riders as well that were, that were up there battling for that world uh, world title. The rider in the orange, of course, is the is the under twenty three world champion. Yeah, definitely. And, and also Sana can be up here, and she has been over the last couple of races, really good in the start, but has sort of faded towards the middle of the of the race, really. So again, we're seeing uh, Sana Kant up there, very much near the front, but uh, Anne Marie Wurst. Again, one of the in-form riders, her, her and um, Celine Carmen Alvarado has really been the, the, the riders who's sort of setting the uh, the front end of, of all of the cyclocrosses mm. so far this season and um, no different today. You can see Abby Mae Parkinson a little bit further back down the group there as well. So she is there for Trinity uh, Racing. So as you said, we have the uh, the provisional starts. We'll run you down through a few of those. Ellen Van Loy well up here as well. Uh, Yara Kasterline as well through this uh, real uh, thick, gloopy mud that we have uh, here. Alita Maria Azufi. Oh, Lechner goes down. As you said, Maggie, the changes in service here. The Italian champion takes a tumble. Yeah, and also going across those uh, those steps at those um, cobblestones, it just that edge just caught a couple of riders out. You can see the tyres sliding straight away. So um, I think it, it's a very different course to what it was this morning, where these guys would have been out checking the the conditions out, uh, with the, uh, the the younger riders having been out been out on the course racing, tearing the mud up and uh, making the, the course even slipperier than what it was. So uh, going up these cobblestones here now, this is quite a tough section as well. It's a lot steeper than what it looks. It is indeed onto these cobblestones and Castelline leading off. Castelline again, she's been one of the revelations of the season so far for Triple Seven here on the front. Del Carmen Alvarado and Anik Van Alphen choosing to uh, to get off and run here. Mount Captains staying on the bike. There's Kim van der Steener in the yellow, the winner last year. They're just uh, going back. There's Abby May, you can see uh, for Trinity Racing, just pushing the bike through here. And it was uh, odd. Let's have a little, little look at the replay here of uh, Lechner. Nothing she could do there. No, I just got that bit of a slide on the front wheel and, um, yeah, couldn't get her foot out quickly enough. But no, no, not too much damage done there, I think. Onto these, again, coming down off the grass, onto the cobblestones, onto this sort of concrety kind of paving as well. Cast the line, climbing away here. Van der Heiden digging in. Interesting. It looks a lot more dry on this particular part of the section, so the water not sticking as much, not creating as much mud, which means they can ride up some of these sections. And for a rider like Mud Captains, it just saw going through the picture there, um, she very much prefers to stay on the bike. She doesn't like running at all. So no, they said triple seven moving up here. They had we had the uh, the race in Ortoi. Uh, the other night. I hope I've said that right. Oh, but, um, it wasn't broadcast, but again, it was really, really muddy. Kim van der Stina took that one. And uh, for uh, for British fans, it was sort of that, that first uh, race as well in Belgium for Abby May Parkinson, the rider. If you've been with us this year on GCN Racing for a lot of our road uh, events, Abby May racing on the road with drops, coming back in with now with the Trinity Racing team. So she'll see uh, what sort of progress that she can make through this one. But Castelline for Triple Seven, former junior and uh, novice champion of uh, of Belgium. You can see it you know, just plugging through the mud here, and and uh, Sana Kant just uh, pushes through again. Kant able to stay on the bike just a little bit longer than than some through uh, that section. Just picking the lines is really important here as well. Green is uh, is means grip and. Uh, just managing to work out on the, on the first couple of laps here now to pick the lines where do you find the grip and obviously the course changes all the time as you get more and more riders going through them as well so a um, couple of gaps opening up already Ellen van Loy having made her way back onto the wheel of Sainte Kant she has indeed so just uh, getting up there as well Meg de Bruyne is also up here but look at just how uh, tough these climbs are on this bone course as we said when we came on air it was very dry very very fast uh, last year and uh, now it, this uh, again the the whole uh, dynamic of the course changes is so sad. how how Stephen the uh, Alvarado just rides onto the back of Hurst there as uh, you can see these riders just battling uh, onto the back of the group van der Steen uh, there's Annick van Alphen goes wide as you said Maggie green is good yeah, as we always say green, green is, is good. good green is grip yeah exactly <laughs> um, but yeah 
I think with this, with the conditions we've got here, and working out exactly where you got the the really deep mud and where you got the grip and haven't got the grip, some of the uh, some of the time you're better off getting off the bike slightly earlier, carrying the momentum of uh, of, of what you're doing. It's, uh, and Van Looy going down there, it's very easily to descent that one. Um, but yeah, getting off the bike slightly early, carrying the momentum rather than trying to ride it and ride as much grip as you possibly can and then stalling, then getting off the bike and starting to run. Um, that usually means it's, uh, it's a bit of a slower version of doing it that way. Van der Stina in the yellow there for Tartaletto. Issa Rex just uh, moving up again on the left. She's got a, a, she has got such a great ability uh, on the... Uh, Sharon Van Aan yeah. coming in the white there, just um, a little bit worse of a start than what she's had in the, in the past, but um, I'm sure she'll work her way forward. Indeed, so this group is starting to uh, form off the front. A few gaps now, Van der Steena there in the, uh, in the yellow. She said she targeted Ardoy in the week, as well as Koppenberg. Van der Heiden here for CCC Live in the orange. Just a few gaps now opening up on this uh, opening lap here. Still Yara Castelline and Celine Del Carmen, Alvarado, Hurst and Kant. Kant again goes wide, gets that uh, that momentum for again from the from the pull of the grip there. Yeah, and it didn't have to slow down too much going into that one to find the uh, find the grip, but yeah, just uh, a completely different line. And it's having that ability and uh, confidence really to look for the different lines, look for the line that might, might be slightly longer, but will actually carry a lot more speed through. Here's, so the formation of your leading group now, Yara Castellan, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Anna Wee Hurst and uh, Sana Kant, then back to Yara Castellan, then you've got uh, right behind Hurst and not far off the back of that group there, so you've got Inga van der Heiden, Kim van der Steener is there, Annick van Alphen who's uh, steadily riding her way through, Alicia Maria Razufi as well for uh, triple seven is there, don't forget, get involved over on the chat forums uh, if you can, say hi both on, uh, I'll do my best, keep a track of YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitter. I'm at Matt, Marty Mac TV on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Maggie underscore PR. If you want to uh, say hi over on uh, on uh, Twitter, great to see so many of you getting on board already. Matt Payne on the crosscast. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome aboard. Kingfish is uh, here as well. You're at Eagleheart watching from Estonia. Glad you're uh, checking in. Oren Peleg as well. Uh, Dar uh, Daniel Barron from Canada. Thanks for uh, joining us. Daniel Barron is on Zwift as well. Love to see uh, so many of you out there on Zwift training while you're uh, watching this one as well. So uh, great to see uh, so many of you on board. Van Loy just into the here. So that's Annick Van Alphen, the rider here in the red and uh, blue. Normally bunny hops the barriers. It's just lining up for that one. As, uh, you, the camera just Pulled away, Santa Camps onto this uh, quartet, this leading group. The, the gaps still not, still not massive in cyclocross terms though. These gaps between the the back of Santa Camp and uh, Inga van der Heiden here. No, not too, not too big a gap, but you can see uh, how intense the pace has been on the opening lap here, and uh, they're trying to pull, pull clear. And uh, Santa Camp currently having gaps, we're coming in for the first lap. Santa Camp having to work really hard to stay on the back of these three real front runners. And you can see here they get the lap now in excess of uh, nine minutes on this one. So uh, going through there. So they're saying again, so they haven't even got their start list right here. <laughs> <laughs> the riders that are uh, leading through there. Axel Ballant is uh, not the uh, the rider that's gone through in the lead. So uh, again, they'll. Uh, it, it helps. I mean, the graphics team. I know a lot of the graphics team that do these. They're in the same boat that we are. They yeah. only get they only get this uh, right before the start. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado attacks through. Yara Castellan battling back here for triple seven. Uh, for someone like Castellan here, we're going into lap two. Uh, our Zufi is trying to come back as well. On this sort of course, looking at this for Castelline, that front line, being able to dictate not only the pace, but the lines to everyone else behind you. Best position to be in? Well, it's definitely the best position to be in. When you can see exactly what's coming up in front of you, you don't have the spray of mud coming up in your face all the time as well. Um, it, it, it always helps dictating the pace around uh, any cycle cross course really, but more so today as well. And, and of course, like I said, the gaps aren't particularly big. And with that, any slight mistake that you make, and all of a sudden you find yourself drifting drifting further back as you're coming in for the first couple of bike changes here. 
obviously it's going to be quite a uh, busy day in the pits with uh, the amount of mud that we got here. Oh, Anamadi First loses that, misses the bike there. Uh, that was a slow change for Anamadi First. The bike, bike not there, bike not ready, shaking her head. I'm not happy about that, that shouldn't happen at this level of cyclocross. But um, this goes to show the mechanics are only human as well and it does get busy in there. So Alvarado takes hers, then her, the teammate there, they, they missed it, so yeah, no planning at all. Generally for triple seven, the mechanics will be really, to cast the line in first, although if you were, if you, if different jerseys, same team, Ozufi yep. going in there as well. Again, that's the downside of having three riders in the leading group here being so successful. Well, it's it's good, but it's not, not good at the same time, obviously, but um, yeah, I, works this back on again so it's not not too big a problem and obviously it happened relatively early on in the race as well so i think the uh the mechanics will have will sharpen themselves up a little bit for next time round. so they will indeed to castellan first can't van der heiden Zufi, and then you've got van loy van der steiner you've got ava lechner is uh the rider that's right on the back of that onto these cobblestones this is a section you'd love isn't it oh it definitely is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i always love a bit of cobblestones um, um, not sure on the, uh, on the pressure that these guys are riding, but you know, cobblestones is cobblestones. Someone just asking over on the forum as well, uh, Stephen Crow, how many laps are they? Perhaps you can explain how it works because we, we take it on the time. Well, it, it's taken on the time and then they work out roughly what, uh, how many laps they think that they're going to be doing to uh, to add up to the 45 minutes of racing that they're not doing. Yeah, so there you have it. Sonic Kurt there just on that run up, looking really labouring up that one up having to run that van loy pedals back onto uh towards sauna camp here ava lechner right behind her cast the line though from the grass onto the cobblestones at, at a nine minute lap that shows just how tough this one is yeah it, it is definitely brutal today and um it, it's just made harder by, by the fact that they can't ride all of the uh, all of the climbs it's just not enough grip out there as you said, Sonic Khan seems like she's struggling on some sections and then she's so much quicker than uh, other riders on other sections. But it kind of goes back into last year was very similar with Sonic Khan. She, she spent the majority of the season struggling to, to, uh, to make podium on a lot of the uh, Belgian cross races there, Super Prestige and uh, Etias Cross and everything else that we got. But then all of a sudden she pops up at the World Championships and she's in the in the league of her own. That, I mean that again. That's her. That's her target, isn't it? That's her yeah. race. She 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 wants. She's you know she's dominated that for such a long time. This is just your head of the race. So, uh, Sanaka, Anamadi first, Alice Zufi, um, Yara Castellain, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, and Inga van der Heide. And then you've got Ava Lechner, just really again. This law as a mountain biker as well, multidiscipline rider Ava Lechner, super talented on the mountain bike as well. That long descent should suit her nicely. Yeah, it definitely should do. Like I said, everyone's got different sections of the course that they uh, they prefer that they're good at. Uh, some prefer the power sections, other ones prefer the the technical side of it. And uh, that's what I think what makes conditions like these so interesting. The fact that uh, being able to handle your bike and find your way through the mud is is uh, such a key skill to have just putting down the power there's Inga van der Heiden coming through here for CCC live a lot of people as well looking forward to the arrival of Mariana uh, Mariana Voss this winter well of course we are uh, <laughs> just like we're waiting for Matthew van der Poel with the men you know it's um, yeah Mariana Voss she is one of the best cyclocross riders in the world and of course we want to have her in the races all the time to uh, to enjoy the, her skills on the bike but uh, you can also understand with the amount of racing that uh, that the women are doing on uh, on the road as well now um, you know they got to have a rest as well you can't race 12 months a year yeah so uh, questions King uh, we got the uh, the king over on the on the YouTube uh, different points today as tomorrow yes yeah, today's super prestige is different series tomorrow's the World Cup yep. and a lot of riders as well Celine Del Carmen Alvarado just uh, takes a little gap here takes the uh, tries to find a bit of uh, grip down the center of that descent a lot of riders go, will be going from here to burn so they got a bit of travel to do after to this one yeah they do uh, and, and that's you know it takes a lot out of each rider as well to do all the traveling and um, 
to race day after day as well, backing up on, the, on cyclocross, it's not easy. It does, especially in these kind of conditions, it does leave a big dent in your legs. Yeah. Um, you just feel heavy the day after. But uh, obviously, this is what they train for. This is what they used to doing. Uh, they are the best riders in the world, so they, they're more than capable of doing so. Ominously now, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado starting to uh, stretch just a bit of a gap here over uh, Anuani Quirst. So coming through, goes just bounce again. You just see the, the surface water bouncing up, the mechanic there for uh, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado. And Anuani Quirst battling back. Oh, Zuthi Castelline really sprinting to try and get back on here. Sana Kant is there. Ava Lechner, again, all choosing not to pit this time. Here comes Inga van der Heide. Looks like Kim van der Steener coming through. Van der Steener is again in the yellow there for Tartaletto Easter eggs, teammate of uh, Britain's Beth Crumpton. But for van der Steener, she had some, again, great season, start to the season last year in Boehm. She won the Koppenberg Cross. Then she had some, some health issues and some personal issues. And, and again, that win in the week is just that, again, as a, as a rider coming back, just that reinforced and back. Yeah, yeah, it definitely will do. Confidence is everything when you're riding, when you're racing, and it doesn't matter, it matter what sport you're doing, really. It's, uh, it, when you get that confidence of a, and, and the boost from a win, of course, you're going to start believing that you can be up there again and uh, knowing that you can be up there again. So, um, But I think now is the key moment here to, to make sure that you get back on track, because as we saw last time around on the Super Prestige, Celine del Carmen Alvarado, when she does go, um, you've got to be on the wheel, otherwise, um, yeah, she opened up a 23 second gap last time around. Yeah, so there's the Alvarado. Worst is just trying to find her way back. Then you've got the two triple sevens right, Castelline managing that little slide underneath her. Oh, Zufi is there. Sanakant is just battling back onto the sandy section as well. If you're just joining us, welcome aboard. If you're just happening across our broadcast, we're live on GCN Racing on both Facebook and our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for uh, saying hi. Uh, Martin McDonald and uh, Magnus Baxter are uh, with you today. Get on board and uh, say hi if you've got any questions for Maggie at half time and even post race we can stay yeah. here as long as you uh, you all wanna, want to uh, want to watch if you've got any questions for Magnus uh, you can post them Alvarado into the uh, the planks here first uses that section there just to run onto the back there again we have that sort of ominous look there area on lap two that Alvarado was just starting to get away on her own and we were with kind of the way she's been riding so far we had that last year in terms of with Matthew Vanderpool just riding away from everyone and, and spending the race on their own but it, it's good to see the group just coming back here yeah it is definitely the, the closer the racing is the more enjoyable it is to watch obviously for us and, and the more exciting it is to, to race as well um but it definitely it does look like uh Selena Cameron Alvarado has got good legs on her she looks light on her feet as well when she's running and um she just seems to be in, in, in very good physical shape at the moment but uh the triple seven riders as well, they are really going very, very well at the opening part of, uh, of the season. And uh, as we see, it's uh, three against one here. Oh, look at this. That is an ominous position. So you've got Annabelle Hoerst, who's in her uh, European champions jersey. She's sitting behind the white jersey uh, of, uh, oh, it was white when she started, of Celine Del Calman Alvarado. Uh, and then you've got uh, Yara Castelline and uh, Alicia Maria Azufi. I'm stopping anglicizing her name, by the way. Yep. It is Alicia. So I'll, uh, we, I do, we, you, you know, we both speak a little bit of Italian. You're more than mine. Ava Lechner going through there. Van der Steen Van der Heiden and Van Loy are your uh, next riders uh, to come through here. So Azufi on the back of the group here. It'll be interesting to see how um, the Triple Seven riders decide to play this tactically, whether they uh, try and make um, Alvarado work for it, put some hard moves in um, on some of the technical sections, and uh, maybe even block, uh, block the lines a little bit. Obviously, uh, team tactics isn't something that we used to see an awful lot in, in cyclocross, and it doesn't necessarily always work out, but. Um, the uh, triple seven riders are currently raising the uh, are in a great position here. Yeah, they are indeed. So uh, Alvarado on the front. So here you have it. So there's your, there's your group. So first, Azufi, Castelline, Del Carmen, Alvarado. As we say, most of the time, as we say, we don't really get the start list. So we kind of go on the fact that we recognise nearly everyone yeah. in the race anyway, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sanakant here from Eco Creelin going uh, through. And... 
just looked like she was she was getting uh, tailed off the back earlier, but uh, it's some finding her legs again and starting to claw some some time back on the uh, four front runners. Indeed. So now the uh, triple seven riders come through. Cast the line. Zufi and Puers. Alvarado has done the right thing here, hasn't she? Just manage these three riders now. Let them decide amongst each other if there's a bit of a hierarchy going on here. But just yeah, just manage the group. There's Yoling Veshkuren here, just uh, running the running the barriers. Abby May Parkinson not far behind her as well. We've got a hard group cycles colours in there as well so we have got our hargrove cycles i think abby manley is the rider that you can see there as well from uh, hargrove's uh, ridley montezumas and uh yoling vashkuren again that that battle with uh, with the bra with her brain tumor as, as we were chatting before we came yeah. on here that's the, it, it, the, the fact that she's back here she's out there she's racing her bike it's going to take her body a time physically to come back from that treatment as well of course it will and, and the recovery time be for, from every race as well is, is taking somewhat longer for her because of the treatment that she has gone through so um, just seeing her on the start line and being out there doing what she loves doing is, is great and I think it's something that you know setting herself that target has obviously helped her fight against uh, against this, uh, this illness that she's had and, you know, it's. I, I just think it's fantastic to see her back, and what what a, what a victory in itself to to get back on the, on the bike and uh, at this level. Indeed, so Sanakant comes through there. We got our start lists. <laughs> So we're uh, we're on lap three here. We've got we've finally got our start list, which is uh, which is good. So thanks for that. We've got Super Sid, just given uh, we've just finally got those as well. We had our provisional Sanacant though, attacking that one. Ava Lechner on this. The way they're tackling this one again, it's a good demonstration to anyone watching. And that's that descent change of surface. You've got to kind of go straight on and then cut back to get the to get up the the climb. There's no way of really carrying any speed because you don't want to lead into that that surface change. No, you. And, and, and also, the, uh, if you take that slightly longer line as you come in, coming off the descent, and it gives you that bit, bit more sort of run into the steep section, uh, get, get some grip under your tyres, accelerate as hard as you can, and then try and carry that momentum as, as far as possible. And uh, I think yeah, Santa Cat has called back a little bit more time again if that's possible. Um, Santa Cat almost prefers. And so if we if we look again at timings, yeah. if we if these races start stretching out towards an hour. So, Sana Kant as well, as she's sort of getting older as well. A longer race has always suited her. She, it's fine. She rock, it has that ability to ride her way back. Yeah, and we see that in, with, with so many different riders as well. How they so, some riders are a lot more explosive. They're really good at the opening lap or two, and, and really are very very fast. And then uh, other riders really find their way later on to uh, back into the race. And Sana Kant is coming back here now, and it's great to see because. She has looked, and we were saying already at the start of, of this broadcast, that she looks a little bit sort of laboured on the bike all the time. Uh, she does have that kind of style on the bike, but, uh, but yeah, she has really struggled to, uh, to stay with the best riders in, in uh, previous races. But this is definitely looking a lot more like uh, she's back into uh, finding her legs in this race, in these conditions as well. But if you ask any cross rider, any of these riders, this is why they do cross. Oh yeah, 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 this <laughs> it doesn't matter who you talk to. It's uh, the, the more much we got, uh, the better it is, really. And uh, oh, Alvarado rode that first part of that climb, but then just had a slip around that corner there. And difficult again to find the grip here to to kick up that last little bit. But obviously, the less you run, the more the fresher you stay for for long. Even if it does look like they're really heavily like laboring on the gear to try and move forward on the bike it's still easier than it is to jump off the bike and run so on to this descent Santa can't you saw just get to the top of that run up there and then they start this descent you see Alvarado just sliding out that back wheel um, as well as uh, Castelline running through that section as well and you get into here Maggie and this is where your stud Santa can't managing to again stay on the bike a lot longer than other riders we saw riders last year as well on some muddy sections. Is this a point where you could almost, you'd want studs on the back, on the heels of your shoes as well? Yeah, borderline. Like, actually running, running down in them is somewhat more difficult than it is running up one than finding a climbing grip. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually, I, I wonder why, why we haven't, uh, the riders have tried to have uh, sort of some smaller studs on the back to try and find that grip. But, um, 
so far it's not too bad and uh, they seem to be able to ride down that descent most of it anyway. Alvarado and Castellain just uh, pressing on here again you just come out of these little sections and all of the time you can see the dynamic of this race is changing constantly little climb little descent the, the just ebb and flow it's just shifting constantly yeah it is and, and also that's what we're saying one little mistake and you see that gap opening up and then the front the riders make a mistake and the gap gets closed back up again so it, it, it isn't well, it isn't done by any stretch of imagination just yet and even Sonic Kant found herself sort of struggling a little bit on that run up climb and then all of a sudden now it looks like she's uh, getting back into it again with some of the more technical descents she's uh, she's making up time Yara Castellan again just pressing through to the front here Castellan has had a great start to the season looking for the uh, hitting the bridge there just going right on this one and uh, Sanakant the world champion that rainbow jersey from Eco Creeland trying to get back onto Anna Marie first and Alici Maria Azufi the riders just in front so thanks as well, all of you, for uh, saying hi. Giulini checking in from Mexico. Melin Noriega from GCN Español is over there in uh, Mexico at the moment. Thanks for uh, all of you for getting on uh, board. Tyler Durden is there as well. Thanks for uh, saying hi. Chris MTB from uh, Poland is uh, checking in. And of course, we have uh, we do have uh, Barbara Borowicka. I think I hope I've said that right. She is the Polish national champion. Saw her earlier on in here as well for Polish fans, Rafael Bruce course uh, from Miami as well. Thanks uh, all of you for uh, saying hi. Our uh, this group triple seven and for Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, she ne she almost needs Sana Kant to get on here. Yeah, she kind of does, but um, at the same time, I thought. <laughs> Alvarado was going to run away with this one um, about a lap and a half ago when she started opening up that bit of a gap. But again, the triple seven riders have found their way back and they keep on sort of working with each other to, to, to a certain extent. But now Sandy Kant is back into the mix of this. Um, it adds another element to the court, to the race, and uh, I think Kant is uh, definitely looking better and better for every uh, every sort of minute that goes by. Really. There you go. Ava Lechner goes through, then Van der Steena van loy and uh, going through the next riders looks very different as well compared to last year the sand is getting compact and then they're able to ride this last year they actually struggled to ride through some of these sand pits that we have on this course but uh, with the rain with the wet conditions it just looks like uh, it becomes more and more of a, a concrete road straight through the sand it does indeed right now we go through the line this time so cast the line on the front so lap three so uh, 26 minutes of uh, racing so far so cast the line Azufi Alvarado first and uh, Sana Kant are here cast the line first now comes through towards the front Alvarado doing the right thing here very right a very very sensible gutsy race uh, Ava Lechner goes through for Krefin the next rider so the, the winner of this race should come from this group Sanakan as this race is going on just onto the back of that group now just a little steady progress van der Steena van Loyen van der Heiden are your next riders coming through Last year's winner goes through next. Worst pressing on, Azufi. Kant just comes through there as well. Azufi, can she again press on with this one? Can she again? Azufi had that first big win last year. Captains goes through as your next round rider from Powell Sales and Bingo. And again, it's 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 a full-on war out there today. We could say, isn't it? Well, yeah, I don't think there's any other description of it, really. It's uh, it's a proper cyclocross race. Really good circuit, really good conditions for, for race, hard cyclocross racing. Into Another that, into that. It's a bike change. Okay. Paul Nutter, just ask, you can answer this, Maggie. How much advantage is a bike swap? Tires will be clogged after a few revolutions. Gears probably work over a lap. So is it a weight issue due to collecting mud or an option uh, to adjust pressures? Well, a um, bit of everything, really. So uh, I don't think there's really all that much uh, difference in the pressures. Uh, they will have probably nailed them down quite quickly. Maybe the first bike change you'd go for a different different pressure if you felt that I haven't got quite got enough grip and the edges that I've been riding over are still kind of okay with the pressures I got. I'll drop another PSI or two and, uh, and and then you go with that, you stick with that on all of the bikes. It is 
more a question of uh, today just having a clean bike, having the gears working properly, that's that's where it's gonna gonna be at. The mud is not sticking too much to the tires, it's still fairly wet mud as you can see. And uh, with that, yeah, they, they will clear up fairly fairly easily. So uh, yeah, today is more a question of just having the uh, having the, the drivetrain working properly for you. And a clean bike is definitely feels faster as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, let's just run you through who we've got. So as uh, Yara Castelline on these cobblestones, this section really suits the triple seven rider, the little cobblestones and then into the climb. She's starting to stretch an advantage off over Alvarado. Yeah, just one rider who didn't actually take a bike change there and uh, that could just opened up that bit of a gap for her. And she build on that now. So just running you through, so Yara Castelline, then you've got this gap back to uh, changes constantly, I'm uh, scribbling them down, uh, Ava Lechner, look at that, attacking this climb, so the lead of this race, Yara Castelline, then you go back to that group of first, Alvarado, Azufi Kant just off the back of that, Lechner is not far off the back of that, then we go back to Kim van der Steeder, who's just in front of van der Heiden, van Looy and Kat Tains. and the last time we looked, Annick van Alphen was the next rider, that's kind of your order, but as I said, it, it just changes with every little rise and fall here. Yeah, it def definitely does. Um, Alvarado is really pushing on here now, trying to open up a bit of a gap, trying to get back onto terms again with uh, with uh, Castellone. But, um, such a brutal day out It is indeed. Uh, he is your leader, Yara Castellone. Going pressing on here. So again, just around that one again, you just see how tough these little sections are. A lot of you were uh, checking in. Ed Altwies from uh, Michigan, thanks for uh, checking in. Alistair Ross watching Poolside in Alcudia, thanks for that. Nice. Poolside. Uh, Rav uh, Yile, I think that is, from Kansas in the USA. Pavel Bocek as well checking in. Lots of, uh, lots of you checking in from Italy as well. Nigel Perks, good old 70s slog fest course. Yes. It is. It's a proper cross <laughs> course, this one, isn't it? Well, it, most, most cross courses turn out to be like this when you get enough, enough wet weather coming in for a while, then uh, yeah, we tend to get this. So uh, the way that it's been, the weather has been so far in, uh, in northern parts of Europe, um, yeah, we're in for these kind of conditions for a while. Is that Bart Vellard just sprinting across like the it. field there? <laughs> Nice speed there, Bart. Gotta say, yeah. it always always can be slightly uh, dodgy running across a downhill field on uh, on global TV, isn't there? Your leader, though, Yara Castelline here is just opening this gap. It's now you can see being left to Alvarado. So Quirst and Arzufi are the two riders. They're letting the uh, or making the uh, the rider here from Coronet Circus chase down the teammate here. You saw the team manager Bart Vellens sprinting across the field. There he is again, so just making the most of these opportunities to just give a little bit of feedback. This is exactly why you spend time in the gym. You can see how hard it is to get turn over those pedals and they are on the smallest gear going up that particular little stretch and uh, it's just so difficult to get find the right grip. If you've got too small a gear, you, you basically your back wheel just keeps on turning. If you've got too big a gear, you can't get up. And your uh, Ali, uh, Aliti Arzufi there, you can see almost again, just onto the shoulder of Alvarado, almost just again, without just a little bit of running, a little bit of interference on the side as Alvarado just comes to a halt there. Yeah, big mistake there. That could be costly as well, because uh, like I said before, when you start doing those kind of rides, oh, down, and that's the down danger, hard. isn't it? Yeah. Just got the balance, the, ba the bite. Again, there's just very little control here. Well, just too much braking, got locked off the front wheel a little bit and, uh, and the bike started sliding and uh, that just sent her off. So this is very, very tech diff difficult conditions. First, you can see they're running long. This is what you've got to do on these sections. Castellan went down pretty heavily there. Oh, can't rode that, that whole turn as well. So she's clearly got the good skills for going around on that descent. Let's have another look. Then too much front brake nothing she could do there and again you just see the frustration just creeping in there for uh, Yara Castellide she knows she had that she a lot of that advantage that she built up there now she needs to again she needs to is she gonna pit is she gonna carry on here no, I think she's gonna carry on I think she's quite keen to try and open up that gap again really got very very good legs on it because uh, Alvarado really struggled to uh, to close up the gap. It was only the, the fact that uh, Castellane crashed there that brought her somewhat closer. 
Can she press on with this one again? They just again, she's just got to settle herself here, hasn't she? Don't panic. Don't let that frustration kick in. Uh, you can see though straight away Alvarado's just pounced as you would just pounced on that mistake of the rider in front yeah and, and you have to um, but like you said it, there's a lot of uh, lot of frustration a lot, lot of adrenaline being built up in um, in Yara Castellane there for when she does that crash not only does that sort of knock you around a little bit you lose a bit of confidence in, in the grip in your tyres and just just finding your way around things again but um, at the moment it's um, yeah and the world's just having the uh, the biggest trouble to stay with uh, with the front and again in this position if you're thinking of the World Cup tomorrow are you kind of if your teammates are out there she's got a Zufi she's got cast line here for someone at Anna Marie first is again is they're almost like okay I'm just gonna gonna look think a little bit about tomorrow or are you if you're here you know you she's fully invested already <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say if um, if you're on the start line with a number on your back um, I, most of these riders, most of these women will will be racing uh, to win the bike race. It, I think if you see that no, this is, really isn't working out for me today at all, uh, your legs just don't feel quite right, then yeah, they might sort of back off a fraction. But um, so far, Anna Mary Worst is in the mix of this. And, and like I said before, it just takes one tiny little mistake. Like we saw something that Glenn Alvarado do on the top of that climb. She just lost the traction, had to get off the bike, made a bit of a mistake in the way she got off it, and he slowed it down. Alicia Maria Zuffi now, the Italian rider for Triple Seven, through to the front. If you're just joining us, we are on the Super Prestige in Boom today. We have a proper battle on our hands. Yara Castellan, you can see here, just those, again, after that crash, those little errors are just creeping, as we said, you, it, it, it's, easy, it's easy for us to say in the commentary box, it's just letting those little frustrations just creep into your riding. Yeah, it It's human nature, isn't well, it? Well, it is human nature, and, and you get stressed about it all, and then you, you start to think yeah, in all sorts of funny ways, and you, you end up making more mistakes. So, um, yeah, it, she just needs to settle down. She's clearly got very, very good legs on her, so just finding finding that, that sort of breathing again, the, finding the rhythm in everything that you do, and uh, hitting the lines and making sure that you do that in the right way. That's, that's the key thing that, um, at the moment. Very looking good. One lap to go. Horst and Castelline come through. Ava Lechner just gradually grinding her way out here. Um, Ava Lechner as uh, she can. You can see eight seconds that gap. 17 back to there. Oh, Alvarado, Alvarado goes down. in hot. And that's again just slides out on uh, on that one. But again, for anyone that's watching this for the first time or is new to this one, this is cross. This is cyclocross, and yeah, she, that she didn't. She went down hard on that one. Just committed fully to that turn into the bank. You see that she lost all the grip. And Sana can't as well to avoid it going into her and all the bike as well. So are we going to get an Italian winner now? And again, this is the thing. You look at uh, Sana Kant throughout this race. She's ridden every section her way. She's taken her favoured line through everything. Different lines to a lot of people and gradually ridden her way back in. And I think the key thing is with patience. Uh, she's, she's allowing the cause to, to evolve. She's uh, allowing herself to, to ride with the grip, even if she means that she loses a metre here or there. She knows that she'll gain it on other areas and, and not stressing about that, I think, is, is what's keeping her right in the mix of things today. Takes a bright white world champions bike. A few more of you checking in. Craig Hardy and Hardy Bikes in Fife in Scotland. Thanks for uh, tuning in. If you're ever up there and you need a legend in cyclocross, just uh, get in and see Craig. Is uh, very successful. Matthias uh, Lindqvist saying, uh, finally a Swede yep. in cyclocross. <laughs> so thanks, uh, thanks all of you for getting on board. Paul Wright in Hong Kong. I love putting a little, little, a little pin in the map around the world. Thanks for joining us here on GCN Racing. What a race we have had. Is it going to be a day for Italy? I know we have a lot of Italian viewers watching. Alicia Maria Azzuffi, as I've said, I've stopped anglifying her name on request of a lot of you. It's not Alice Maria Azzuffi, no. it's Alicia Maria Azzuffi. So uh, we'll say that. So uh, thanks uh, all of you for getting on board. Kant, Hurst, 
and uh, cast the line Lechner. Do you know what Ava Lechner, the, the way Ava Lechner gets, she, I reckon she's going to get onto this group. Yeah, I think she will as well. She's uh, clearly finding her legs towards the back end of, of this race. And as a, as a mountain biker, although the start is very important in mountain biking, um, the, the length of those races actually play in her favour uh, towards the back end of a cyclocross race. And uh, yeah, I think you know, Sophie is going to be somewhat nervous, I think, of making any mistakes. And she's seen now that, that there are plenty of riders who have made mistakes, and especially that, that difficult slippery descent as well coming up in the... Uh, in about a quarter of a lap or so. But look at the difference between Sana Kant here. She's ground out this climb every single lap, hasn't she? She really is digging in here. Yeah, I think she may have actually made a bit of a mistake in terms of the gearing, the, the gear choice that, that she's put on the bike for, for today. She's not really got a small enough gear to be able to turn her legs over on, on this steeper section. So maybe just... Uh, Two teeth less on the front uh, would have made that, that a lot better. Yeah, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, that heavy fall or going into this lap. Uh, you can see, and uh, the rider's just uh, now uh, Zufi on that climb. Look at that, gives her a real proper burn up there. Yeah, she looked uh, very strong up there. Just found a good, good grip, good line, and uh, maintaining that momentum. These are the difficult bits now, though, for it. Just making sure that she goes committing 100%, but still keeping that sense of uh, I'm in control. Um, I think that, that's the key thing to see. Uh, I would rather really having to chase hard, but uh, I think it's a bit too late. Yeah, good question. Lechner's on. on to the back here. Good, good. Alexei Kor uh, Koroblov just asking, why do the riders knee drops on the bars except for carrying the bike? They seem to be useless. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. modern braking allows you to brake on the top, whereas in the past you used to brake on the drops. But you do see some riders still favouring the drops on descent. Yeah, it, it all just depends on, on how steep the descent and how technical the descent it is and, and the vibrations and so on. But like you said, the, the, the uh, arrival of the hydraulic disc brakes has made it so much easier to brake on the, on the tops all the time. Uh, and I think there's a certain amount of tradition in it. It should be a road racing bike with tyres for mud, really. And that's the way uh, the descriptions are made for, for a cyclocross bike. So that's why we still got them. So there's your rider, your leader in the red here. Alicia Maria Azufi from Italy for triple seven. Her uh, fellow countrywoman, Ava Lechner, riding onto the back of that group. Ava Lechner as well, you know, from mountain biking. If you're a mountain bike fan, there's the team manager, Bart Wellens. And I think... The, the experience that he's making to this triple seven team you, it's it's just priceless isn't it? it it definitely is but they've also invested in, in a lot of young riders for a couple of years now and uh, they're finally starting to see the the uh, the rewards for doing so and and now we've got three three triple seven riders <laughs> in the front riding for the podium uh, in today's super prestige and and that's you know, it just goes to show you, you believe in the youngsters, you give them time to develop and allow them to, to develop, really. And then the, with the experience of uh, someone like Bart as well, it's, it's obviously going to be, yeah, if they have the talent, they, they, get, they, they are going to make it. So uh, uh, patience is, is one of the things for as a team manager. It's quite difficult to have. Um, but it does pay, <laughs> pay dividend when you do have it. It does. Look at this. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's the final lap here with Bell Lap. And it's uh, the Italian Azufi Del Carmen Alvarado is trying to find her way back here. Followed by another Italian, Eva Lechner. Look at this. Lechner is just so good in these conditions. I remember being over in uh, in Milan for the EKZ Cross Series a few years ago. And it's got this absolute... I think this, is, this descent's long. It's got an absolute monster descent in that one and Ava Lechner took that race on these sort of conditions on these sort of courses that is this is something that suits her perfectly yeah it definitely does and uh, you can see that the skills from the mountain biking definitely comes into play on, the, on those kind of descents uh, uh, and, and with the um, with the conditions being as slippery as they are I think uh, Sophie here now will been made aware that uh, Lechner is coming and she's coming quite fast as well she is what a charge she is making look at this Italian 1-2, uh, Alicia Maria Zuffi, the Italian champion, Ava Lechner right behind here for Krefin. Here's Anna Marie Hurst here trying to defend for triple seven as well. Zuffi, of course, winner of the Gavara uh, Cross 
last year. That was that real breakthrough victory for her silver medalist behind the rider who's chasing her hard in that Italian national championships as well. Beginning of this year, she also uh, runner up in that uh, cyclocross masters race that finishes the season. But uh, for Ava Lechner, has just steadily just powered through here. Our Zufi though, through this section, is it gonna be this, uh, a victory for her today? She's looking super strong here. She definitely is, and um, I, yeah, I think uh, Eva Lechner is slowly running out of time to uh, to chase it down. And uh, with uh, Anne Marie Wurst is sort of protecting the uh, interest of the Triple Seven team there as well. Can they make it a one two? Uh, let's see. And Del Carmen Alvarado again, just recovering from that tumble, is uh, not far off the back of that group. You can, again, you can just see how deep that mud is and how much the riders are having to get up onto the uh, onto the bridge it's not far away now for Adzufi and Hurst alongside Ava Lechner here it's just like yeah you know, you're really gonna have to uh, work harder than this to get my teammate back yeah, yeah I think so definitely but um, also Sanne Kant is uh, slowly but surely making a way back onto to that duo as well and uh, if it comes down to a uh, a sprint if Kant is with them coming on to the final straight then uh, she's definitely someone to uh, beware of Yara Castelline just on the back just ahead of here Celine Del Carmen Alvarado this race has just changed uh, with every single section so far Yara Castelline that leader gave way to Alicia Maria Azufi here from triple sevens in the lead first just starting to make a little bit of a late charge they're trying to take a one two hit the uh, the other Italian rider on the left of your picture there for Crefin so uh, Italian rider on the Belgian team uh, Sana Camp here Yara Castelline back battling for a strong uh, position here as well. But, uh, this battle and Sana Kant, the world champion, just trying to get onto the back of this group, give herself a fighting chance of uh, a second or third spot on the podium here. Yeah, Sana Kant just picked the best line through that little section there and caught up with, uh, with Wurst and uh, Eva Lechner and uh, coming into the final straight here now. Not far away, here you come for our Italian viewers, Alicia Maria Azzuffi from Triple Seven. What a race from the Italian. The mud shows what a brutal day here in Boom. But the Italian takes the victory and Ava Lechner sprinting it out. It's going to be an Italian 1-2. Lechner, Sanacant, then Anamari Horst, and then Yara Castelline, a frustrated fifth here for uh, Castelline. So Azufi, and uh, there, <laughs> you racer is Ava Lechner. You can see that <laughs> they're having a few issues here with the uh, with the uh, uh, the graphic on your uh, on your screen there. So Alvarado, here's Van der Steiner coming through with uh, Inga Van der Heiden. So that next group uh, coming through there. So these two riders. So strong race. So Azufi and uh, Lechner, Sanakant and Annemarie Horst is the uh, riders through. And then Yara Kasteline. Here comes Kim van der Steiner here for Tartaletto Iserex, the winner last year. High fives the crowd. So she will be happy with that defense. A win in the week in uh, similar conditions. And then uh, Inga van der Heiden, so the world uh, under 23 champion, comes through next. So that's eighth, so two more for our top 10 here. Let's see who's kind uh, of come through next. It's Mount Captains. So again, Captains, steady progress so far this uh, season for Mount Captains started with some victories earlier on. So there's, uh, you know, and then Ellen Van Loy. So uh, again, we're just seeing uh, these riders so far doing this one. What a tough race! Amazing uh, conditions. This is th this is what we missed all last winter, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't think we had uh, five mud races in in, in the whole of last uh, last season. So uh, yeah, this is this is cyclocross, and I think all the all of the riders will have enjoyed that cross as well. It's um, really really beautiful course and uh, great conditions for, for cross what a winner that you got to say hats off to that to that ride from uh, Azufi well from Azufi but but also from the rest of uh, the triple seven team they they were right on, on on top of it the whole way through um, 
although yeah. there were some of the uh, uh, issues I, being yes, had. I know that in a track like this one, I could do a good race because it was quite muddy and uh, yeah, to push a lot uh, on the pedals. But actually, uh, after the last weekend, last Sunday, I was like not sure anymore. Like yes, I know that uh, I am a, a train and everything, but you never know. Like taking a win, it's never easy. And yes, I'm so happy about the win of today. Okay, you prefer to speak in English, that's very good for us, of course. Okay. Um, a win in the Super Prestige, the first win in Super Prestige, that's something special? No, it's the second one because I won last year in Gavere, actually. This, this season, I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, this season, we are just at the second race. And uh, yeah, it's uh, something really special. And uh, yeah, I'm happy and uh, looking forward to the next races. You waited for the ideal moment, uh, you waited not, yeah, quite a long time to to um, to overtake the the other ones. Was that was that the plan? No, like uh, I think there wasn't really a plan. But uh, now that uh, we are three strong uh, uh, riders in uh, in the same team, we have also to to look uh, after each other a little bit. And uh, there was a Yara in front, and I was uh, with Selin, and uh, Selin closed the gap. And immediately when she closed the gap, I said, "Okay, I think now it's the moment to to try to go away." And yeah, I try, and I took some meter. And when I saw that uh, I actually had some meter, I just uh, go straight for all the, the last lap of full gas. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you have it. What a day for Alicia Maria Azufi. A, a nice save from the interviewer there. Whenever you, <laughs> whenever you don't know what a rider's wear, I always try and make it look out like they're the one that's just made the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But um, no, great, great ride. And, and it's also good to hear that. that, that, that Triple Seven team is looking after each other. That they're, they're, they're playing the tactical game a bit, and uh, like uh, Sophie was saying, she she had Castellane up there. She just sat there, waited. Celine uh, brought brought them back, and uh, at that moment, it was the right moment to uh, to attack, and uh, it showed straight away. She got uh, she got the gap, and yeah. uh, well, full gas from there. Indeed. Well, if we get some more interviews and things, we'll 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 uh, cut back to them as well. Finish line. So I've got at the moment our top ten: are Zufi, Lechner, Sanakant, Anna Marie Hurst, Yara Cast. The line, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Kim van der Steen, Inga van der Heide, Mount Captains, and Ellen van Loy. Got to say as well, Ava Lechner. What <laughs> yeah. a ride! Well, good, good ride. Yeah, really good ride. Solid. Uh, came back very, very strong into that that front group, and and like I said, ended up second. So. Um, she did look better and better as the race went on, but obviously she's starting from a little bit further back. She, had, you know, had to fight her way through some of the traffic, and it's not easy on 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 a wet course like it is today um, to find that line, find the grip to be able to get through. And also she had that crash as well. Remember, right at the very start of uh, on the first lap. Yeah. So so finding the way back it was uh, some ride definitely, and uh, I think it bodes well for for the next couple of races. And for, for the world champion as well, Sana Kant. And I think I yeah. think sometimes we give her a bit of a hard time. Time, don't we and apologize yeah. you know we're like oh we uh, the world champion so okay. we're so used to seeing her every race out there and dominating but the strength and depth of talent throughout women's pro cross it, it's always been strong but it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger and again she rode a really a really really solid race today yeah she did and she's on the podium and and uh, like i said i think we we, we are giving her a bit of a, a tough time sometimes but when you are world champion then that's kind of the attention that you draw to yourself but I think if we look back at last year, she was consistently there all the time. She didn't have the big results, the big wins all of the time, like we're kind of expecting. Um, but at the same time, when you're constantly in the top five, then uh, at, at the level that, that women's cyclocross is right now, that's 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 good riding. That's good results all of the time. And uh, you very rarely see Sunny Khan outside of the sort of top couple of riders um so yeah she's she's doing a great and great the job. italians as well you know the the the, <laughs> the strength of the italians has always kind of been there azufi as you said she won in uh Havara last year yep. and she's she's won that she's won this one as well anyone down there in italy that's gonna and we've got a lot of italian uh, fans i actually think we have a lot of the time we have a lot of uh Alice's <laughs> family on here because i'm always yep. seeing azufi popping up on there and um, we'll take you through our top 10 but that italian national title this year is going to be a massive one Alice maria Azufi, Zufi, a winner, 47 minutes of racing. They, uh, they, I love how quickly they always put that one up. But yeah. we've given you, we have given you our, uh, our uh, top 10 today in that one. Um, some riders as well. Um, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Yara Castellane, both 
the victims of, as you would say, of 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 the course conditions. But yeah. that's cross. It is. It is cyclocross. Um, I think Celine really went down quite hard on on, on that final lap. So. Um, I hope that she's okay after today, but it looked like she took a bit of a heavy hit on that yeah. one. But um, it is cyclocross. That is the way that it goes. And when the conditions are the way they are today, then it's it's usually just as big a battle as to stay on the bike as it is to actually try and win the race. And um, we saw that today, playing yeah. itself out quite quite heavily. Yeah, she did take a proper whack on that one. If you're uh, looking at the time, uh, the men's race is in, looking at my watch, about 25 minutes time. So we have a bit of, we have a bit of half time for you. Um, so we're going to, we'll, we'll come back on that one. We'll just put the top 10 back up before we, uh, before we come to that one, just give you confirmation. So there's your top 10. Super Sid's got that one for me. So Ali, uh, Alicia Meriah, Zufi, Ava Lech, uh, Sana Kant, Anna-Marie Kroos, Yara Castellan, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, those, those three Dutch riders there. Kim van der Steen, a great defence there in the top 10. Inge van der Heiden, Mount Captains, and Ellen van Looy. So uh, the Italians, the Belgians and the Dutch dominating uh, the top 10 today. So 203 separating that top 10. So a little bit of halftime entertainment for you. Maggie and I will be back just before the men's race. Remember, if you've got any questions, you can post them uh, onto uh, on the chat forums as well. Well, and on to uh, Twitter if you want to. Don't forget as well, um, Jeremy Powers' pop new podcast is out. I'm on there as well. Uh, Jeremy's leading that one. So you've got, we've got our new Cyclocross podcast. Check that one out. But I visited the uh, Trinity uh, Racing Team launch. And also we've got a little how-to from Jeremy on, on your, your, uh, your dismounts and your remounts. Uh, enjoy this. We'll be back in a few minutes' time. <laughs> Second year of the team now, and looks like some exciting new connections. For one, we're here at Red Bull House. Yeah, we're launching a Trinity Racing Cyclocross team in a Red Bull in London HQ today, which is um, very exciting. In terms of that, how much work has gone through? Because I know you put the team together last year, it was TP Racing. How much work's gone through to put this on the road for this winter? So last year was all a bit last minute. We wanted to build the environment around Tom to kind of help him develop and succeed. This year we could plan a lot more, obviously. Uh, talking to Tom about what his race program he wanted to be, his goals, and talking to our partners from last year. So we've kind of extended it. It was going to be a, ro a gravel and mountain bike team as well for Tom. It has extended again to be a small road club team, but um, luckily we have a lot more time to plan. With Red Bull, we've been talking to them for a couple of years about Tom, so it all kind of came together nicely. The jersey, new name this year, so it was TP Racing last year, it's now yeah. Trinity, so a new name. Does that kind of as well take the pressure off a little bit, not having, you, having your name above the door? Yeah, I'd, well, I don't think it gave me much pressure last year. It's like, the pressure just you, it comes from yourself, doesn't it? So you, you, can, you only put it upon yourself. Um, but yeah, the new name, new team, a few new sponsors, you know, well, Red Bull obviously, and uh, yeah, Zwift. And Wahoo as well as yeah, specialising in Matt from last year, but it's uh, yeah, it's certainly it'll be pretty exciting for this year. And in terms of objectives now for cross season and into next year as well, what what are you aiming for? Well, I'm just gonna you know get in there, get stuck in a bit, first few races, no pressure or anything, start and then then going for podiums and yeah, I want to and obviously the ultimate goal like every year as well, John. What's your objective sort of this winter and, and looking ahead to, to next season? I want to kind of pick up where I left off last year. Uh, I got into a really good rhythm of, of uh, just ticking off new things each race, just putting into practice what I was learning. And uh, yeah, on this platform that Trinity have provided, I can keep doing that. Uh, the goal is to just be as much of a sponge as possible, like learn from Kurt, the team director, uh, learn from Tom and just, yeah, use this use this opportunity to just push as far as I can go. So world selection is a big one. National champs always, you want to do well on home soil. Um, yeah, they're just, they're the big ones. You, yeah, I want to just give them all. Happy May, here we are, new Trinity team launch. This is very much back to your roots, isn't it? Going back through your results. You had quite a lot of success as a, as a cross rider in Belgium a few years ago. Yeah, I did do a few a long time ago. Feels like very long time ago. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to get back to it. I've done one cross race already so far, and it was, yeah, I, I love it. To be honest, I do love it, even though I say that it's really hard work, but it is fun. 
So yeah, definitely excited to get back. And do but it's it's so far this season. It's like a hundred percent success rate uh, so far. One one race, one win. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to end that way. <laughs> <laughs> and where are we going to see you? Where, where are you starting and what? Are, how many cross races are we going to see you in this winter? I'm starting at Boom at the Super Prestige and I'm then going to do all of the Super Prestige until the end of the year. So I think that's about six races. We'll see how they go. And in terms of coming back into cross, in, for anyone that's looking to get into the sport and maybe who's had a break and wants to come back, What's your advice? Where do you, how have you started and where would they start? I think in the UK it's really easy to get into it. There's so many um, like regional uh, series that you can do. I mean, I started this year just doing a, a Yorkshire series and they're so easy. To, you can just rock up on the day, you can enter. I think it's like £12 or something to enter and you just, you don't really need all the equipment. You can do it on a mountain bike if you just have a mountain bike and think, oh, I fancy doing that. Um, and then this week, I'm actually, I'm at my boyfriend's down in Southampton and I'm doing a Wessex League and I'm just going to rock up to that and do one of those. Like, they're so easy to go along to and it's absolutely no pressure. Like, you just ride around and even if you're getting lapped a few times, it doesn't matter. As long as, like, you know, you stay over to the side and let the people come past you, then it's just good fun and it, it really, it's such an easy way to get into it. And for our GCM viewers, our cross viewers, what's the best bit of advice that you could give them in terms of improving their, their sort of riding and racing? Uh, well, there's a lot of different things, but um, probably don't start with a muddy race because that's a pain in the ass. If, especially if you're starting out, you won't enjoy it. Maybe if you're, uh, well, you know, you might enjoy it, but it's, it's certainly more difficult to go to a muddy race. You need probably need two bikes if you want to finish. Yeah. Do you think ultimately as well that some big teams need to remember that some of these youngsters coming in, they still need to have a lot of fun in their life because happy bike riders make successful bike riders, don't they? Yeah, and Tom is definitely a product of that. When he's happy and enjoying riding his bike, he goes well. Of course, it depends on the rider. Some riders are happy training 30 hours a week, focusing on the road. So every individual is different. And I think that's more w where teams should shift to, treating each rider as an individual, what suits them and making a plan around that. It's cliche, but you have to, you, you don't have to enjoy it, but yeah, enjoying it helps. Like if you can muck about on your bike, play on your bike, all the best riders, like, geez, as soon as they get a moment, they're doing wheelies and doing skids. Like that's why we, that's why we love it. Um, so yeah, just play on your bike. Don't feel like pressure to do anything. If you want to go muck about and do a crit race, do a crit race. Like there's nothing stopping you doing all these things. If someone else is doing something, go do another thing. Like just, just push yourself and, and enjoy it. How to get on and off of your bike has been discussed on GCN by many prominent riders. Now, like a good old recipe from your grandmother, it's passed down through the generations. I learned it a certain way. Maybe the Belgians learned it a different way and their cookies taste different than our cookies. And for good reason, a lot of what I talk about is gonna be based on personal preference and the way that you learned it. But today, I'm gonna teach you guys about how I learned it and the way that I like to get on and off the bike. So the first thing that you need to think about anytime you're at the cross track is what gear will I be in for whatever obstacle that you come up to, whether it's a jump or a gap or a barricade, a log, stairs, what gear am I gonna be in? It's a big thing that you have to always think about anytime you're at a cycle cross track. So why do you not wanna be in a big gear when you get off the bike? Let's imagine that you're flying down some swooping downhill and then you're gonna get off the barriers and then it kinda goes off and a little bit slightly uphill and you're in too big of a gear. What's gonna happen? We get the bike away from you and then you go to get back onto it and well, it's not gonna be very efficient because I can't get the bike back up to speed without muscling it really hard. Okay, so now that we know what gear we're gonna be in, which for this moment going so slow is gonna be our easiest one, the next thing we need to do is take our right leg and get it around the back of the bike.
Then you wanna take your right hand and you wanna put it three quarters of the way down the top tube so that you're set up. Okay, so now the next thing that you wanna make sure that you do is you've got these points of contact. Three points, left hand, left shifter, right hand three quarters of the way down the top tube, and then you've got your saddle right here on the seat. Okay, so we've gone through so far, thinking about what gear you need to be in. You wanna make sure that you get your leg around the back of the bike. You want your three points of contact, left hand, left shifter, right hand three quarters of the way down the top tube on your hip. You're gonna go out, you're gonna pause the video, you can go practice that right now, and come back. So when you're coming into the barriers, you wanna make sure that you have your points of contact set up long ways out. You don't wanna be trying to do all that stuff right here in front of the barrier. That's not gonna end well. And then you wanna make sure that you get the bike nice and far away from you, okay? The last thing you wanna do is have this seat underneath your armpit with the pedals all up in your knees. That's not gonna be good for anyone. You're gonna hurt yourself. You're gonna hit your shins on your pedals and you're gonna probably eat it. Next, we're gonna talk about how to put the bike down. You wanna have the bike as far away from you as you possibly can, and then once you put it down, it's not a drop, right? You wanna make sure that you, nice like landing a plane, nice and gently, you wanna put the bike down, then you wanna take your right hand, you wanna put it on top of the right shifter, and then you wanna to count to five as you're running with it. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna get back on the bike. You've got your bike, put it down, take your right hand, put on the right shifter, count it to five. Now you've got to push the eject button and you've got to get back on the bike. I've seen so many different things happen over the years. Crow hops, bad style, the bike goes down too fast, it's bouncing, people try to get back on. They, uh, yeah, no, don't do that. You want to hit the inside of your leg like this right here. Hamstring can take almost all the force. It's a very strong muscle. So hit your hamstring and then as you're going forward momentum, you want to find your pedals and then pick your head up and look forward. The last thing you want to be doing, looking down here here while someone's having a problem in front of you and then you run into them. You want to have your head up, looking where you are, and keep your momentum. Okay, so now we need to tie everything together. Remember, you want to be in a super easy gear, especially if you're going to be going at it at low speed. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that you get your points of contact set up. So the points of contact are those three points, your left shifter, your right hand three quarters way back on the top tube, and your hip. You want to make sure that you get the bike way away from you. You want to set it down gently, like an airplane. Hand goes on the right shifter. Now you're running with the bike. One, two, three. Then eject button. Hit that hamstring, look down, find the pedals, and then immediately look up because you don't want to run into anybody. Riding with your bike long horn style, leg way back, arm off the front of the bars as you get to the top tube like you're trying out for a skating team in the Winter Olympics. No thank you. Here we've got the old dismount while still holding the top tube to get your foot around the back of the bike. This is bad for a ton of reasons. Mainly, it's impossible to control your bike like that and super dangerous. both hands on the shifters, trying to quickly get your hand on the top tube to pick the bike up, no thank you. Stepping through, this one is not great if you love your front teeth. Now I know a lot of you old school riders out there love this technique, but at high speed, the step through, man, listen, it might be personal preference. I'm not mad at you, it's just not the way that I would do it. I just wouldn't do the step through. It's not a good look, especially if you love your front teeth. It, I like mine. They're gonna light me up in the comments for not talking about the drive side of the bike. I'm, I, I actually don't know how to get off on the drive side of the bike. It's so goofy to put the bike on, like run with it with the derailleur all up. I just, I can't, I can't teach it. I can't do it. That is my recipe that I have developed over many, many years. I'm pretty much a grandmother or a grandfather at this point. That's my recipe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Let me know what your recipe is. If you liked mine, if you've got your own, I'd love to hear what you guys do differently than I do. Um, if you want to see other great cyclocross videos, check them out right here. And if you want to subscribe to GCN, please click right there. 
Hey everyone, it's Jeremy, and we're talking about the all new GCN Cyclocross podcast. Yes, we have a podcast. It's all about international flavor on our podcast. We're doing our best to bring you the information from all around the globe. Lars Vanderhaar, another rider that I've been able to share the podium with and create a friendship with over the years. I'm going to present some, we'll call them hypothetical scenarios, year long roommates with Tune Airt. So you guys are heading out for a course pre ride, and in the first couple of turns, he chops you and you go flying over the handlebars and you land super hard. And you like look up and you're like, dude, what the heck? Like, what were you doing? But he doesn't know. He just keeps on riding. He kind of looks back. He gives you that look like, shouldn't have tried to come in like that. Do you A, hide his shoes on the morning of the race? B, sprinkle some Tabasco hot sauce in his chamois cream when he's not looking and mix it in? Do you C, steal the batteries off his SRAM derailleurs just before he's heading to the race start? Or do you D, you make a mental note, but you let it slide this time? I think I would actually just put an empty battery of SRAM in his radio. I think that's just the best to do, I mean. <laughs> Erwin won the 2007 World Championships in Belgium. The commentator at the end of the race said, hot verdeka verveka, which I think means hot damn verveken. Nowadays in Belgium, every race is live on television. Uh, TV stations are battling <laughs> to have the TV rights uh, for Belgian cyclocross. So, uh, that's a good thing. Marty, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I want to talk about Anna Kay from Expers of Foot Logic, first of all. Came into the barriers. Helen Wyman had said she'd been telling her to bunny hop them. She did. I think both of our reaction, we were just like, whoa, Anna Kay. <laughs> so check it out wherever you get your podcasts from. Please leave us a review and subscribe so that you know every time we drop a new episode. Also, Shoot us a line on social media so that we have your feedback. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Check it out. I hope you enjoyed our halftime content. I've got to say, um, yeah, I enjoyed the Trinity team launch. Those uh, those guys look like they're having fun out there, don't they? They definitely do. I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for joining us. Elite Men's Race kicks off very, very soon. Magnus Backstead is with me today. Let's remind ourselves of round one in the Super Prestige Series. Man of the moment, Elias a bit not here today, deciding to uh, concentrate on that that uh, UCI World Cup, and understandably so. Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, he, he's leading that, so um, I, th I think he wants to go fresh into the World Cup to uh, to make sure that he can and well build on on his uh, his lead in that. Um, and as we've seen today, it's, it's a very, very heavy cause out there. And I think it will definitely leave a few traces in uh, a lot of people's legs having done this race today. It was just, if you weren't with us last last week and you saw Tone Arts, that that was a gutting moment. We were all yeah. devastated <laughs> for him. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was very unfortunate. He, uh, he rode very strong to get back into to the mix of it. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, a mechanical sends him back the way he did. It's uh, it's unfortunate, but it's it's part of the sport, unfortunately. And uh, it's part of bike racing. It is indeed. As soon as we got live pictures from the start line, we will go to those. As we've said, we want to hear from you. We want your, we want your videos. We want your successes. And like John in Japan, who we thank John for sending in his videos. We also want your little fails. So John sent us this, uh, and he was, he's was he been watching Jeremy's videos, coming into the barriers. He nailed it the first time over that first one. Foot comes out. I've got to say here, Maggie, guess that front wheel up on the second one. I, I put that in as uh, just about save of the day. <laughs> Um, the fact that he managed to get over over the second one and uh, get the front wheel over the second one, I think, uh, yeah, take my hat off on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, thank you so much for sending that in. But we want to put, you saw our little montage that we have there. Um, uh, Sid and John do such a great job with our epic montages. So we want your videos, gcn.eu forward slash upload. You can put your video clips, whether you're out there at your local cross, if you're out in your back garden and you're practicing your bunny hops, looking at Jeremy's videos and taking all of that content or if you just want to say hi so gcn 
www.ufootballclub.eu forward slash upload. Send us your clips. We're going to put them together. This is going to be our, our, our GCN Racing viewer cyclocross uh, montage. So any clips you got, send them in. Right, let's talk about the course today. Yep. Last year, and we were watching before, and we saw that Trinity launch there with Cameron Mason, friend of the show. Um, yep. Check out his vlogs. He's a very funny guy. Um, we were watching his. It was so quick. This, looking at the women's race, it is just an absolute mud fest. Well, last year, it looked more like a, like a road racing sort of dry gravel crit. And um, yeah, it was super, super fast. And, and this year, yeah, it definitely a lot wetter out there, a lot muddier. It changes dynamics of the race completely. Um, and, and it will make it a lot heavier uh, a race. So um, yeah, I think we're in for a good one this afternoon with uh, with the men's race. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to a big battle. Okay, not going to give you any spoiler alert. So if you don't want to know what happened in the women's race, so I'll give you a five second warning. You can press mute and look away now. So if you don't want to know, five, four, three, two, one. And it was an absolutely epic race and it was Alicia Maria Azufi from the 777 team uh, her teammate Yara Castellan had been leading she went down really heavy she had been chased hard um, by Celine Del Carmen Alvarado who also went down but the Italians go 1-2 Ava Lechner coming across the line in second Sana Kant the world champion in third Anna Marie Hurst in uh, fourth place the world champion back into a nice white jersey on the podium yeah looking a lot cleaner isn't it <laughs> but yeah good ride by Sunny Khan today as well getting getting third in that um you know it, it's it's never easy to carry around those rainbow stripes and and performing week in week out no indeed and we and we've said a little bit earlier on we we put a lot of pressure on Santa Camp we expect her to be again just dominating week in week out but there's a reason why she has those uh, rainbow stripes uh, uh, on her jersey she's uh, targets that world uh, championship and super dominant there's Ava Lechner in the uh, Tricolore jersey, the Italian national champion. What a day they had. That was, again, one of the... That was, an, again, a, an exceptional ride. She went down earlier on in the race and yep. uh, picked herself up and got back onto the podium. Yeah, she went down very early and uh, went down quite hard as well. So, um, yeah, good good from her to... to get herself back into the race and getting uh, getting second this uh, yeah, really, really good ride. And then uh, our uh, a f a winner onto the uh, the podium, another Italian, and uh, Alicia Maria Azufi, uh, the uh, rider from the 777 team, on to the podium for a really solid victory. As we said, the Italian National Championships is going to be some race uh, come the uh, the back end of uh, this season. So there's your podium. We are going to be getting very close now to the elite men's race. Uh, and again, a lot of people as well, uh, Maggie, um, Poit Van Aert is uh, still coming back from injury. Yeah. We're waiting for the arrival of, of uh, Matthew Van Der Poel back into racing. I think he's delayed that a little bit more as well. Um, of course, uh, the, the news that um, his grandfather, who we know we see at races, Ramon Pulidor, is unfortunately very, very poorly um, in hospital. We've yeah. got to send big love out to uh, to Raymond's family and Matthew's family. Um, so a legend of the sports. Um, so thoughts are with them. Let's go through the course. As we said, this is going on the women's race. This is an absolute mud fest here today. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, it's it's not very cloggy, cloggy mud. It doesn't seem to stick to the bikes that much, but uh, it's definitely difficult to find traction, difficult to uh, to find that grip. And um, yeah, we saw quite a few bike changes. Uh, just more to keep the drive train clean today. Um, and you can see it's still very much wet there. So we've got the uh, standings in the Super Prestige. Yeah, so Ellie Isabit leading from uh, Quentin Hermans, Corny Van Kessel, Lars van der Haar, Jens Annams, Dan Suter, Gianni Vermeersch, Laurence uh, Swaik there, and then uh, Tonarts and Joris Neuvenhaus is the uh, the top 10, so 15 points. So you said Ellie Isabit not here today um, for that one. There's Laurence uh, Swaik. There's uh, Tonarts just looking hoping for that luck. This man, Gianni Vermeersch, great start last week. He's one of the only riders to ride that first uh, first climb of the day, Lars van der Haar. Uh, Quentin Hermans, and then Tom Pidcock. Tom Pidcock, front row start. This is good for yeah, him today. Yeah, it is very good for him. And uh, 
looked pretty good in the, in, the, in Ardoy on the on in the in the middle of the week as well. So um, I think he's looking forward to this one today. Indeed. So watch the lights, the anticipation. The British champion on the left, the German champion on the right of your picture, Marcel Meissen, is uh, well to the front of uh, this one. You can see Cameron Mason just in the back there. Ben Turner also well up there as well for Clearfin. And uh, Pitcock just trying to find his legs a little bit. Timo Kielik moves through for uh, the Clearfin team. Like there was a bit of an incident going into that into the hole shot there in that first corner so just leading out here so we're going through so you've got sir quentin hermans corny van kessel oh tone arts did he pull his foot out yeah he did it got lost uh, quite a bit of distance there it's quite a bit of ground in the in, in the first sort of 20 30 meters as well he did and uh, you see they're just bouncing off each other going through that section there's Tommy Erson Cameron Mason just alongside him as uh, well so Pitcock just on the inside Timo Keelich it looks like uh, Tim Merlier that's up there wearing 15. Tim Merlier goes through Laron Sweet now through towards the front opening lap here in uh, Bohm and Corny Van Kessel just moves up as well. Quentin Hermans through there as well. You can just see they just sort of they get caught at that start. You just get caught in that sort of washing machine effect. Yeah, definitely. And uh, quite a lot of the riders now starting to throw their glasses away as well early on in the race because they uh, got Ooh. caught. Ooh, that. You and I just went down hard then. Just got caught on that barrier. He did indeed. So going through there, there's Craig Gow wearing number 70 in the pink there. So watch on the inside. So it just gets caught behind Tone Arts there. Yeah, it got caught on Tone's wheel. The Tone Arts not having the not having the last two races here. He's having to battle back all the time. If you weren't with us for the women's race, as you can see, mud, glorious mud that we've got. Gianni Siebens just on the left there. You can see just trying to find a little bit of grass. But some gaps starting to open. Joris Neuvenhaus there for Team Sunweb, just trying to find his way uh, back through this one onto the cobblestones, onto the climb. Just see the riders just shifting through the gears as they as they hit this sort of road section. Yeah, and it's it's just about settling into the race here now, finding that rhythm. And uh, it's such a hard course out there today with the mud, and uh, it just seems like it's actually even more wet now than it was uh, when the women were racing earlier. And uh, it's going to make it for an even tougher race. It is indeed. There's Pidcock, there's Meissen going through. May Urson goes uh, through as well. Just run you through for uh, our various countries and uh, various fans. We'll just run you through the field because it's not that huge, actually. So Tone Arts, Lauren Swait, Van der Haar, you've seen all those riders across the start line. Dan Suter, Jens Adams, Nuvenhaus, Merlier, Mayusen, Edwin De Witt, Yannick Peters, Pidcock, you see in the British Champions jersey as a Hermans attacks this climb, looking really good here. Ben Turner is wearing 43. Uh, ben Tullett is wearing 48. And uh, we've got so also in there as well, uh, Maxime Gagné from France. Finn Mansfield is wearing 62. Watch out for Finn Mansfield. And then you also have as well Craig Gow, who's wearing 70. Cameron Mason is wearing 73. Easy to pick out in that Trinity Racing jersey. Pidcock onto the back of the group here. Again, uh, Tom Pidcock, I think looking at, uh, he had a good, good had a podium in Ardoy as well. The, the conditions very similar to this, very, very muddy. I think he's uh, kind of pleased with where he is. He, I don't think from talking to him at, the, at his team launch that he thought he'd be as far advanced in, in how his legs were feeling already. No, I mean, he's, uh, he's a year older, he's a year more experienced. He seems to carry a slightly different calm than he has done in the past, even watching him here now, although he's a few riders further back than he might have liked to be, he doesn't panic. He's not trying to make up the time in, uh, in, in half a lap and, and sort of rush back into things. He just allowed this sort of race to settle in and then start, start sort of plugging away in the way that he does. And I think that... The experience and the calmness that he's having is, is obviously coming off the back of uh, having a good season doing cyclocross yet last year. He's had a good road season again and um, he's just getting getting stronger and stronger year by year. And, uh, you know, you've got to sort of take it off to take your hat off to uh, to Trinity Racing and uh, and the guys that are managing that with, uh, uh, with McQuaid behind it. The way that they're allowing him and, and take sort of calming him down 
not trying to win everything in this first year of doing things, but actually just progressing through the sport. It's quite a look. Watching already um, Quentin Hermans and the gear selection. We saw it with uh, Sana Kant in the women's race, but really rolling a big gear on these climbs. And the, the, again, the power for those that are interested in power must be, you know, must be phenomenal to watch. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And uh, obviously, if, you, if you've got the legs to, to turn those gears over on, on, on this, it's, it is definitely better. It works out better because the more smaller the gear you run, the more torque you get into, into the back wheel and the easier it is to lose the traction with it, which basically stalls you on, on those kind of uh, slippery, difficult uh, climbs that we got today. And, but it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fine balance between the two, between running that big gear or getting off and running. And if you're happy to run, uh, I think today is actually probably quicker. There you have it. So just a little gap back there to uh, Pitcock, Swake, Adams, Van der Haar. Just uh, moving up there, so uh, Vermeer, Meissen, Meosen, all uh, close to the front of the group. Thanks for uh, checking in over on the forums. I'm going to say it because it's one of my favourite words. I hope I can say it properly. So Randy Lewis checking in from uh, Saskatchewan. Got it out there, so there uh, great one there. Chris Bennett, Carl van uh, Hoodebeek, thanks for uh, saying hi. Morris Woodward in Hepburn in South Tyneside. Thanks a few for saying hi over on uh, Facebook. So uh, just uh, like it looking uh, at there as well. Thanks for uh, saying hi, Marty Birkinshaw from Taiwan. That's a one we haven't seen uh, for a while as well. Jack Pynchon uh, saying hello from the cafe at the top of Alp Duez. Thanks for uh, oh, there checking in. Yeah. There you go. Nice if you can uh, take that. Up your road up. Yeah. So uh, hang on. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a pronunciation police. Now Maggie speaks seven languages. So uh, okay. So he's getting just driving him nuts. Quentin, Quentin, are we saying it wrong? I think uh, we do try in no, terms it, of... It's, it's Quin Quentin Hermans. Yes. But even sometimes I'll say, if, if, when I say it, it's an E, because I say Shram and everyone, all the, everyone gets on at me because they say I put an H in it. But we, again, we, we do try. So Quint, yeah, Quentin Hermans, I will try and, and stop uh, erring towards an E. Do remember, we are all from different parts of the world. We do all work very hard on our pronunciation, so we do we do try. So yeah. apologies if it's driving you nuts, but we do try. And, and we've been having a we've been having a pronunciation lesson here. As I said, Maggie speaks seven languages. English is English. You did used to be your first language. I think it well, is now. I think it definitely has become <laughs> it now. Yeah. So uh, just ask it as well, James McCallum. Keep keep us updated on Cammy Mason. I will. Thanks, Jimmy Mack, for checking in. Um, we can see Cameron. Uh, we will. We uh, again. We see what you. We do see what uh, you see. Coming through at the end of uh, this lap, Quentin Hermans. I'm going to really uh, overdo it now in terms of uh, <laughs> making sure I'm not driving you nuts. So apologies on that one. So Quentin Hermans, Courtney Van Kessel, Tim Merlier, Tom Pincock, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Swank uh, comes through there. Dan Suter is the next. Lars van der Haar and uh, Gianni Vermeersch crosses the line next. Then Jens Adams goes through in 10th. Uh, so a good, uh, good one. It definitely looks like uh, Pitcock is making his way back onto the front group here now. It's very select little group there now. Tornards as well in that Belgian champs jersey. So looking quite strong, quite confident in there. Yeah, Swate gets uh, up there. Just to remind you of this race last year, so it was Matthew Vanderpool that took it from uh, Tonarts. Gianni van Meersch was a third. Uh, Quinton Hermans, it was, uh, uh, I even say the H now, Quinton Hermans uh, was up there. Laurent Swaik was uh, fifth, Lars van der Haar, Michael van Toren out, David van der Poel, uh, Jens Adams and Tom Mewis, and that was your top ten a minute. And two separating uh, separating them out. Bit of history of this race, so 2015 it was Lars van der Haar that took it, Wout van Aert in 2016-17, and as I said, Matthew van der Poel last year. So this group here, good formation of uh, this group here, and uh, tone arts you can see the Belgian champion putting a few of the issues uh, <laughs> of the opening lap just be just behind him at the moment yeah I mean it, it, I think he was really pushing to uh, with, with a sort of somewhat if he start that he had um, missing the pedal in, in the first couple of strokes there uh, he, he really wanted to make it onto the front row of and, and being the first three or four riders very quickly and I think that stressed him out a bit and uh, made a couple of mistakes uh, because of it. 
but uh, now s sort of settling in with that group of uh, and, and with his teammates around him as well. It's definitely uh, coming into, and this is a tall nuts type of day with the amount of mud that we uh, we got here. He is a mud specialist. Um, <laughs> He is indeed. Pidcock is just in front of uh, Swake there. This is probably one of my favourite climbs of the race. This suits Merlier here as well. Yeah, it definitely does. And, and also Lauren Swick, um, he, he's a power man, this guy. He's uh, always running those, like we were talking about earlier, the bigger gears. And uh, he's most of the time slightly happier when it's a, a faster circuit, but such a powerful rider. He is indeed. So Telenet Balwas Lions get of a strength in numbers here at the front, the three riders. And then you've got uh, the Kreefin team. Look at this, attacking this climb again. Quinton Hermans. Arts as well. I think for me, especially as we saw it last week, the way Tone Arts got back into the race, that, that gap that he had to make up to um, Hermans and uh, Ellie Isabet. And, and I said to Jeremy, I was like, Answer to get back. It's this burn that he does that he can, that is just, a, even if he's gapped, it's that late on charge that we've seen him make race after race after race. It's quite unique to him. Yeah, it is. Uh, and he is a, a final lap and a half uh, specialist, should we call it. That's usually where he finds the legs that no one else seems to have at that moment in time and uh, more often than not could, does come back very strong or does make his attack in that final lap and a bit and uh, he's, he's known for it everyone is kind of waiting for it to happen but yet when it does happen very few riders have the uh, ability to uh, to respond apart from uh, uh, a few riders out there obviously uh, um, a couple of the guys are not here today in Van der Poel and Van Aert but um, yeah it's uh, impressive when it when it does ride it yeah so you can just see the the uh, telling it bow was lions riders one rider just clipping off the front quinton ermans then uh Malia is right there pidcock just trying to find his way and i think again it's great for cyclocross just having another flag in there here at elite level yeah of course it is of course it is and um i think we've uh, we've all been waiting for uh, for pidcock to start racing the uh the elite race is not uh, just the under 23s uh, at World Cup level and uh, at this level as well. And uh, I think he's um, he's going to definitely leave his mark on, uh, on on the races going forward. It's technically so, so, so good on the bike as well. And again, you see the difference technique. Tom Pidcock just lifts the front wheel, drags the bike up, up that section as well, rather than sort of shouldering the bike. Yeah, it, it's all... You know, every every run up, every corner uh, has got a different way of, uh, of of doing things and and what works for you as a rider. So I think it's most of the time it's just working out what type of rider you are, where how you um, tackle the course in the fastest way. Not what everyone else does. Not trying to ride everything just because it's a cool thing to do uh, and because you might be able to is actually what is faster and um, I think there, there, there are many riders out there um, not just at this level but at uh, various other levels as well who tend to try and ride everything because it's, it's cooler to do so. Interesting as well to see uh, Airman's here not taking a bike change compared to everybody else. Pidcock does the same, chooses not to pit this time again for anyone that's watching cross and is new to this pitting is su it can be is such a tactical thing as well yeah it is so if you feel like you've got a couple of meters on a rider as you're coming past the pits um then then and you know that this is a one one lap um race where every lap you go in and you pit um you can put some pressure on the riders if you know they're going to go into the pits you you decide to sort of not go in and you can almost uh, trick people by, by sort of aiming for the piss and the last moment you flick around that post and you don't pit and, and the other riders have already committed to going in the piss. Once you go into the piss you have to change the bike and automatically you kind of open up that, extend that gap that you already had. Um, Pidcock found himself a couple of meters off the back of the rest of the guys. He decided not to pit because that means that he pr probably end up on the back of, of the wheels of those guy, guys in front of him again. Um, so it's a way for him to close up that gap so um, it is muddy out there today but like I said it's not sticky mud it doesn't clog the bike up an awful lot it's just having a drivetrain that's running a bit cleaner and uh, a clean bike is always a faster bike in terms of uh, we, we do have to talk about it and I, I don't go on about it a lot because I know my brother Anthony loves talking about tire pressures and um, when, <laughs> when, he, when he's doing when he's doing yeah. stuff so, but tire selection tire pressures again looking at this it's a big mud tire day this is it what Helen would Helen Wyman would call a griffo day 
Uh, what well, today is definitely more of a Lima's day than, <laughs> than a Griffo day. Yeah, Griffo is more of the intermediate sort of um, and dry tyre, whereas as the, the Lima's tyres um, from from Challenger, uh, that's their mud tyre. Um, today is definitely one of those days. I think um, to to even remotely get some grip on the on the bike going up some of these climbs, you have to do that. But the tyre pressures are so individual, depending on on how heavy you are and how you ride your bike and and how sort of light and agile you can be on the bike as well so um, yeah the pressures are so individual coming round next lap Ehrmans goes through Corny Van Kessel that style Corny Van Kessel it's very mellow in his style Corny Van Kessel the rider that's uh, in second so Van Kessel Swake uh, Arts Merlier and Pidcock just trying to find his way onto the back here behind Tim Merlier. Uh, Pidcock again is doing a, Tom, he's doing the right thing here. They are going up as well. The races, the hour long races, he's got he's just being patient. Lars van der Haar and Gianni Vermeerschke going through uh, seventh and, and eighth place here for van der Haar and Vermeersch. But Pidcock's doing not panicking, just steadily just riding his race. Yeah, I think it's easy to uh, to to go too hard too early and, and go into red and and sort of pay for it and and with that I think that having that patience and and just riding your race and right effectively raising the cause rather than racing the riders around you um, until until a very late stage in in the race that's the the, the smartest way of doing this today uh, with the heavy conditions like like they are now. Um, if you start racing the other guys too early and, and you, you're going for every attack and every uh, kick out of a corner and, and so on, then you just find yourself just going that bit too deep, bit too early, uh, and you end up paying for it towards the back end of the race. So what, what, what Tom is doing here now is finding his rhythm, he's finding his, his lines and his way of riding it, um, sort of gauging as well, I guess, uh, to, to what... Uh, the riders are doing in front of him what lines they're taking and uh, trying different things to then work out okay where am i quicker than everyone else if he then manages to find him, find his way back into to the race to, to start racing for for the win later on in in the race he knows where they're good and where they're not so good it's quite an interesting as as, a, as an amateur rider as well race the co course not the riders around you as well so uh, you just never know what can happen in cross as well no you don't uh, and Especially when the conditions are the way they are, any tiny little mistake, and uh, and and that means you're losing five seconds. So, just m making sure that you are consistently hitting the lines, being perfect with with every breaking point and how much you you know everything about it um, is, is absolutely key. Racing up this cobble climb hard, um, just finding your, your your way of doing it, but where you're the best, are you better on a steep muddy section or a steep slippery section like this one, or are you better off going hard, harder on the cobblestones to make that difference? So Pidcock, uh, you can see just out of the saddle, just chasing down that group. So that group in front, Ehrman, Sweet, Van Kessel, Arts, Malia, Pidcock is on his own here, in between and Van der Haar and Vermeersch, not far behind them. I think what, what we're seeing so far and the difference, we're, we got so used to last year seeing Matthew van der Poel uh, riding away, this bun these little bunches, this is, this is a different kind of cyclocross if, to, if people were watching it last year for the first time. Yeah, very different, very different. This is what cyclocross should be like in, in seeing the guys being under pressure, making mistakes, recovering from those mistakes and getting back into the race again and, and having this, uh, this sort of fight for position all the time is what, what cyclocross is all about. Obviously, it's, it's incredibly impressive to sit and watch a Mathieu van der Poel um, going against... Uh, I go back a couple of seasons when it was van der Poel versus Wout van Aert, then... You know that was spectacular to watch, but having the mix of five, six, maybe even seven riders in deep into into a uh, cyclocross is, I think, far more exciting to watch. Really, yeah. Nice control. You just saw again tone arts, just that controlled slide there as well. And sometimes, if someone's watching in the in terms of looking at cross riders, when they hang your hang your feet out and the way they you know give a little hand sling around here and there, it's not because they're making mistakes. It's about a way you've got to use everything in your in your arsenal of tricks to be able to manage the course properly yeah it definitely is um, half, of, half of the time you just, just try to stay rubber side down really on on, um, on these kind of conditions and we see that steep slippery descent as well as so many riders doing the different different techniques different ways of doing it um, everyone manages things in, in, in different ways and that's what's so exciting to find about uh, cyclocross when we get so many riders effectively battling it out 
against each other. Yeah, you can see just this climb, just how muddy it is. It's just these climbs are uh, it, the bride is just battling up this uh, section. Airman's just goes to the right, looks for a bit of green, looks for a bit of grip, gets it out of there. Does Tone Arts manage to do the same? You can see, no, he has to uh, get off. Uh, Airman's uh, rode that one again. Goes grip is green is grip. Yep, definitely. But just looking at that, how different the lines lines that take different size riders different weight riders um take the lines in different ways and uh, watching two now doing this descent with one foot on the pedal <laughs> just going down there just being prepared to jump off the bike and sort of slide around that corner um the technique they, get, they, they got is uh, impressive that's phenomenal to get, 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 get that chance just have a look we'll, we're going to try and at a point clip some of these things out for you to see but tone arts going down there one foot out here's pidcock sprinting to try and uh, stay in contention with this group thanks a lot of you for checking in Quint, uh, quinton Elmans is your uh, leader now he pits he hasn't pitted for a while he's been steadily trying to build that lead uh, Courtney Van Kessel and the Jason group doesn't. So uh, Van Kessel leads through there. Everyone else chooses not to pit as well. Yeah, and obviously the um, the way that that happened, they're trying to make some some time back up on on uh, Hadamans again, and uh, you know they're deciding not to pit as Pitcock has now got in for a clean bike for the first time in this race. So he gets in there. Thanks for checking in, Cal Van Horbeek. Uh, he says, uh, enjoying our cross coverage and he's Belgian. He's been watching it Dutch for 40 years. Thanks. Well, I feel honoured <laughs> that you want to listen to us. Uh, I do indeed. Uh, even Guerra, thanks for checking in from Italy as well. And uh, thanks uh, all of you just for uh, saying hi. Darren Howitt, Matt Payne is here as well, uh, the cross cast. Thanks for uh, checking in, Matt Payne. Uh, it's a, a, a real, uh, what would we call him? A stalwart of British yeah. cyclocross is Matt Payne. Thanks for uh, checking in. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, thanks over you as well for uh, your uh, comments over on uh, YouTube. State of the race. Can they get back here? So Tim Merlier, you can see here. And uh, this, uh, the, you commented on it earlier on, Maggie, the sand, the way that the, the sand earlier on in that section is a little bit more rutted here, but it's uh, it's definitely made it more manageable this year. The, yeah, the it, it has massively. Uh, I mean, the first part of that is hard packed sand now, which is uh, just super fast to ride across. The second part is still a bit bit more cut up and uh, you're having to ride a rut, which is, is not easy. You can see how the guys kind of, hang themselves sort of almost off the bike and uh, to just try and sort of keep the balance whilst they go through it. Just uh, Van Kessel jumping those hurdles, everyone else is uh, dismounting. Obviously very difficult when you've got such deep mud running into the hurdles to, to get over them on the bike requires uh, a pr pretty special technique. Even Tom Pidcock usually bunny hops just about anything. Uh, it's, it's getting off the bike today. And it suits Lars van der Haar, as we said, we saw in our uh, epic montage that we put together. It's kind of his bogey, bogey uh, obstacle, that one, isn't it? Yeah, the, uh, it, the, it, the barriers. It tends to be, doesn't it? But um, he's got better at it. He's realised that he has has to do it, and uh, uh, he's now doing it as long as as long as he feels that it's, it's safe to do so, and uh, and, and he's quicker. Uh, and I guess that comes down to like today, is it actually quicker jumping um, the hurdles on the bike, or are you, are you better off uh, getting off the bike? I was trying to put a clock on it last week in terms of what he was losing, and it wasn't a huge amount. So there's your top so far: Airman Swake, Van Kessel, Arts, Merlier. Then Pidcock, 10 seconds down. Pidcock is still manageable, would say. Yeah, he's just lost about four seconds uh, over that one lap on the uh, front group, but he's still running in sixth place, which is um, it's good. So just gradually he's going to uh, find his way back here uh, in terms of uh, coming in off the road season and, and back into the cross season. Swake comes through and powers on. Looking at Norton Swake when he goes around those corners, he looks like he's carrying a lot more speed than most of the other riders. Um, I don't know whether he's picked a different tyre choice to them or running a different pressure to the rest of the guys there, but it definitely looks like he's finding more grip around the bends than anyone else. So going through Vermeersch, Neuvenhaus, Adams, Bacart, Neusen, and then Neuvenhaus has dropped back a little bit. If you were keeping track of that tick of Ben Turner, who's in about 15th uh, last lap, and the again, the, the, the man on the front now, this, this is his conditions. He loves a, loves a course like this. Yeah, the, the harder he gets, really, the better he, the better he is. But usually, usually it is, it's, I think it seems to prefer 
go better, I should say, when when it's slightly firmer ground and it's a bit faster. Yet he is just enjoying these kind of conditions, and I think every cyclocross rider out there didn't. They've been waiting for these conditions. We had a whole season of dry weather last year. And there, there weren't many cyclocross races where they had to bring the mud tires out and. You know, that's, that's what cross is all about. You should be covered from top to toe in this. It is indeed. And uh, just checking in, I've just seen that uh, Meredith Miller's joined our coverage over on uh, Facebook. Welcome, Meredith, friend of the yeah. show. And this is what Meredith would call track to pull mud. Meredith <laughs> yeah. did some commentary with us last year. This is Meredith Miller track to pulling mud today. Well, definitely. Yeah. I think that sounds uh, that's about right. It does. Pressing on here, Tone Arts. So this group still very much together, though. Peter Picove checking in from Brazil. Steve Poole, big shout out to the train camp down there in Spain. Matt Demby, Libby Demby, and Jake Poole. Thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, Malia just onto the back of this group. So again, looking at these gaps, they're all pretty manageable at the moment. And uh, Pitcock will be hoping at 10 seconds down. As you said, Maggie, he lost four seconds on that last lap. Might just hope that this group start just uh, having a little look around at, um, at each other as, as this race goes on. Yeah, it definitely will hope so. And But I think if you're looking at the front, uh, front couple of riders here now, they, they are fully battling each other there and they're really gloves are off at the moment um, in, in the way that they're riding so I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon um, which obviously is not going to bode well for, for Tom Pitcock but um, Laudensweek is, uh, is definitely putting the pressure on here now and he's looking just riding around these corners like he's on rails so Corne van Kessel so this leading group so Swake for Pal Sows and Bingo then uh, Quentin Hermans and uh, Tone Arts. Thanks uh, for checking in over on uh, over on Twitter as well. Got more of the pronunciation police on there as well. So uh, I do try. I, I, apparently, I, I'm, I'm saying Anamari Horstrong. So um, how, how would you say it, Maggie? Uh, Anamari Horst. There we go. So uh, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, it's great that we're doing global commentary, isn't it? With uh, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to say if any 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 non-British viewers have e ever heard of uh, Only Fools and Horses. I don't want to sound like Boise from Only <laughs> Fools and Horses. Sometimes, if I uh, try and put on the try and do it, uh, I always bow to our colleague Rob Hatch at Eurosport. He's uh, he's the the man with the pronunciation. So I, we do try. <laughs> but thanks uh, thanks for saying. Saw Miguel Yolanda Alvarez as well. So uh, thanks for. Uh, saying hi all of you over on uh, twitter as well leslie etheridge checking in over on there as well so great course proper cross conditions that we have today this tone arts at the top of this climb telling that ball was lions and uh, looking for that uh, victory today if they can get it but laurent swake just hangs that uh, left foot out here and again, just think, I love the way he just takes this, the bottom of this descent, just swings the bike round, grabs a handful of, uh, of uh, course spike to swing himself around. Yeah, well, he's one of the few riders who, who gets off the bike on, on the drive side. And then with that, it's perfectly um, positioned for him to, to kind of grab a hold of the, uh, of the, the course, um, you know, spikes basically to, uh, to pull himself around and to, to stop himself from sliding too much. Um, and you see a lot of the time on these type of uh, conditions that the guys are using the course to, uh, to get themselves around some of the corners and whatever is the fastest way really and uh, if there's anything there to, for you to grab a hold of then why not? So they will grab a pit that time. Just a little question as well. Giolini, uh, interesting, how come they don't suffer chain suck when the bike is covered in mud? Well, they don't really run the, the, the bikes for, for long enough for that to happen. So as soon as they start feeling that the chain is um, it's starting to clog up a bit too much or they feel that um, it's not shifting just just right, then, then they pit. And today is basically uh, every, every once a lap pit and change, change bikes. Um, but some of the cloggier conditions, as you can see, it's still very wet mud. Um, it doesn't stick to the bike as much. And uh, But some of the, some of the uh, heavier conditions uh, that you get where the, the mud really sticks to the bike, it's, a, it's half lap changes that, that you go through and even in half a lap the bike gets clogged up but not to the point where you're starting to get the chain sort of ripping around so 
uh, if you're getting that, if you're riding cross yourself, um, change the bike more often if you've got two bikes. Uh, just just do half lap changes if the conditions are in that way. They are indeed. Uh, just a, a question as well. The uh, I can't remember who it is now, um, but asking why Tim Malia is not in Corandon Circus Kit. He's with the the Kriffin team for the yeah, winter. Yeah, it's changed. It? Yeah, it's changed teams. So he has indeed. So let this group now sway. Just goes across to the side there. Art to Hermans and Van Kessel still with him. So it's th uh, three against one that we've got here. We had that with the triple seven team in the women's race. Yeah, we did earlier on, definitely. Alan Swig is, uh, as you can see, he's um, one of the few riders in the uh, in the bunch here who d does dismount the bike on the, uh, the drive side. So if anything, that uh, Pidcock has got himself a bit closer. Just managed to get over that. Just sort of rode the hurdle rather than jumped it. So he did. He just uh, now started to, to start a bit of a charge now, Tom Pidcock. Had that start. Almost looked like he, again, took it steady. Kept them at a manageable distance. Now he looks a little bit more animated in this race. Well, as we were saying earlier, just, just ride it to within your capabilities. If they're going too hard at, um, at, at an early point in the race, then... Just having the confidence of, of holding your rhythm and uh, letting them do what they do and then sort of see if you can find your way back in later on. But Pidcock is definitely coming back into this race. We're halfway through the race now. Lap 31 is raising. Yeah, so a few of you just asking lap count. So now we're on, uh, you can see lap five of eight. So they go through that time. Um, so the gaps uh, as well are coming down. It's starting to get a bit of a charge from that group behind. So Pidcock has ridden on to the back of that group. You saw Pidcock, the British champion, attacking that group. To do, the riders behind managed to ride the barriers. The only rider to do so. There's your top 10. He was at 10 seconds. It's Van Kessel, Sweet, Arts, Hermes, Pidcock, Malia, Van der Haar. Vermeers is your top eight at the moment. So Pidcock starting to get a bit of confidence now. Well, it's definitely getting you a bit of confidence, but I think it's also starting to take a few risks on on the hurdles, jump, you know, sort of riding them rather than uh, getting off his bike and running them, and uh, realizing that this is the moment now where I need to try and get myself back into the race, back into the mix, because he is one of those riders who does not like coming second, and uh, <laughs> he will do whatever he can to be right up there and uh, making sure that he's he's competitive. And I think today for for Tom Pitcock, a podium would be a really, really strong result for him, but I think obviously he's got his side set a bit higher than that if he can. Myson and Adams are the other two riders in your top 10. So uh, this group you can see leading out Van Kessel, Swick, Arts, Hermans, uh, the group then Pidcock and uh, Malia are the chasing riders behind. And again, you know, I know we have, we have this behemoth of a kind of presence that kind of sits over Cross at the moment. He's called Matthew Van but yeah. these are the opportunities for these riders to pick up the, a prestigious win in something like the Super Prestige and set themselves up for for the GC. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and the fact that it, you know Matthew Van der Poel is coming into uh, into the season later on this year than than he's ever done. He has said he's not going to do a, an, another season of 30 cyclocross races. He's going to be a bit more selective with, with what he does. Uh, I think it does open up the sport a bit and. Um, when these guys get to race each other, um, rather than they're just trying to hang on, I think that makes a massive difference in, in the development of the, these guys as well. Tone Arts now makes his attack again. They will have seen Pidcock starting to come back. I love some of the little kids riding up the side yeah. as well, alongside them. But they're uh, they're attacking this climb, um, Malia. Again, just to explain the sort of Malia. You can race for one cross team and one road team, can't you? Yeah, you can. Uh, as long as the teams are happy for you to do so, then then obviously that's uh, that's something for the for the agents to to negotiate and and set up for them. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's not a uh, done deal that you have to ride for for the one team. Um, most of the time that's in, that, that does happen though because there are very few riders who actually have a, a really big uh, road career and road team uh, and I think that's why we saw World Van Aert having so, so many contractual issues uh, last year with um, uh, the fact that um, Jumbo Visma wanted to sign him and he wasn't happy with the, with the merger of his teams and so on. It's, it's a constant sort of uh, negotiation that goes on behind the scenes to keep these riders doing what they do and but like I said out of these guys I think probably a couple of them that are of a really really high level on the road as well. Uh, Arts those really attacking this one and you saw that uh, up that climb 
just saw how close he was pushing it to those uh, to those barriers but the telenet bar was lions rider at this point uh, with three three to go um this is the the point where he really is attacking this one but pidcock is trying to get on here as well to the front of this group he's gone past corny van kessel yeah, he's going really strong at the moment, but you can see that Toon, Toon Arts has just done that big move and he needs to get um, himself back onto the wheel of Quinton Hermans to uh, to make sure that he doesn't lose any time. This is the really hard part of the course. If you can find the grip up here, if you can ride this section, if you can ride the next section, that, that makes a big difference in terms of your uh, time against the rest of the, uh, the device. You have to jump off and we'll see it. Toon Arts gets around this corner rips the bike around as he got the grip. Well, he's looking at that, he gets it this time. We saw him uh, laps previously, not managing to get there. Pidcock is battling to get on here for Trinity Racing. So Pidcock, he's just gradually picking these riders off in front of him. He really started that charge. Look at this, absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Does a little two wheel drift there as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's impressive. With only one foot clipped into the bike as well. Um, yeah. Don't try that at home. No. <laughs> uh, Dave Powell, shout out on Facebook to the N uh, NWCCA riders dreaming of similar conditions at Heaton Park tomorrow. Uh, thanks for uh, checking it. Giles Pidcock, uh, let us know. Is that uh, Tom's dad, relation? Mm -hmm. um, check out that. Richard Simone, shout out to Smulty Bikes, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, watching over there. Thanks all of you for uh, checking in here on GCN Racing. Today, Martin McDonald and Magnus Backstead are with you. If you've got any questions for Maggie, you can post them on the chat or onto Twitter at Marty Mac TV. I am at Maggie underscore PR. We can have a little Q&A afterwards if you want. We're here all day. Good. We, can, uh, we can go on for as long as we want. The uh, Laurent Swake, though, is battling back to Tone Arts. So Arts, that, again, that little uh, testing attack there. Uh, what Pidcock's got to be hoping here is that Swake gets back on. Arts looks around and it just gives him that opportunity to just get onto the back of the group and get that chance to just maybe get a tiny bit of recovery. Yeah, well, it, it was... Um, so Tom really did an impressive um, sort of comeback into that group, but he got on just as uh, Tone Arts attacked again. And uh, I think... Tom had to go really quite deep to make him get himself back into uh, into the front group, and it's just unfortunate timing, or should we call it good timing from two nights, unfortunate timing for for Tom Pidcock that the attack happened just then, and um, he's now finding himself sort of uh, just having to to settle down a little bit again, try and recover a bit. It's still a long way to go in this. Uh, as we get past the, the finish line here, we're going to have another four laps to do, so still a long way to go. There it is. Uh, here we go, Swake. Hermans still there again, having a great start to the season. These riders are arts. What might have been last week, got up to his teammate there in front of him with uh, Ellie Isabit, dropped his chain, and uh, that was a uh, big fought back to finish in the top 10 last week. So it was uh, Isabit from Hermans, uh, from Van Kessel, Van der Haar, Adam Suter, Vermeersch, Swake, Arts, and Neuvenhaus. Tuan Ars just jumped them, them hurdles there as well, so uh, I think that will have uh, put another couple of metres into the gap. There you go, nicely done, Tom Pidcock. So there's the gap now through that section. So uh, you can see the riders behind us. Magnus said a little bit earlier on, choosing to uh, run the planks rather than uh, bunny hop them. Malia fighting on here. So uh, again, a lot of success on the road this year, didn't he, Tim Malia? Yeah, yeah, a lot of success. They had a really good road season, but just uh, it just goes to show that the, the, the sports are, are very, very different. And I think cyclocross um, translates really quite well onto the road, but road doesn't necessarily translate on back onto to cyclocross. And uh, making sure that you're getting enough of a break in between the road and cross season uh, to practice this sort of stuff to get your, your your engine tuned up for cyclocross it's really key to if you're gonna if you're gonna leave a dent on the on the cross scene so um, you know I think what Matthew van der Poel is doing uh, taking that bit of a break and making sure that he's coming back in to the sport fresh um, is, is absolutely key and, and having managers coaches um, people around you who really understand the physical demands of the two different sports and and building in those breaks for you to to make sure that you're doing the right stuff all the time because as a, as a rider you want to be racing every week and you want to be racing uh, pretty much 12 months a year and you're so keen to 
to, to be on the bike with a number on your back, um, uh, it, 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 you can be your own worst enemy. How does th how does this as well? Because we look at uh, Huat Van Aert and Matty Van Der Poel in terms of the race you won, Paris Roubaix. Uh, how does this sort of thing? How does that transfer from cross riders over to something like Roubaix? So uh, I think it doesn't really matter whether it's uh, whether it's cobblestones on on you know, like you said Paris Roubaix or whether it's uh, just this normal road racing as we've seen uh, with with Van Aert and um, and Van der Poel that that you know it's very much possible to translate the stuff that you're doing and even Tom Pitcock is uh, obviously a very very accomplished road rider um, it's 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 easy enough to get the the cyclocross engine and, and legs across to the road but like I said it. The other way around is a lot more difficult. It's a, it's a different way of pedaling the bike on, on in cyclocross, um, and you've got to find that feel for you find the feel for the bike and uh, and the grip and uh, just just a different uh, sort of energy that that you're producing. It's the technique as well. It's it's the subtle things as well, isn't it? The way on a cross bike you have to get out the saddle because you can be on, on the road it's through the way that you have to kind of it's almost like a figure of eight almost sometimes in the way you have to the way you move the bike the way you pedal the bike compared to trying to be silky smooth on the road it, it's all about finding the grip and doing working with a bike to find the grip um, and, and that's that's the key thing whereas on the road very rarely do you struggle for grip uh, you can always lay the power down and um, and the more power you lay down the faster you will go whereas on cyclocross it's you, you you got to ride the bike based on how much grip that you have on the underneath the rear wheel and uh, sometimes if you push too hard you lose the grip so it's it's being patient it's uh, there's so many skills involved in, in in this form of racing that isn't isn't there for for, for road racing um, so I think making sure that you're getting the practice in is, is absolute key. Tom Pidcock drops into the bottom of that descent, goes straight on, levels it up and then attacks this climb. He uh, almost got on just as Tonart's made his move. And uh, he's being chased hard by his teammate here, Quinton Hermans, and then Laurent Swake right behind him. There's your gaps, there's your leader just going around the bottom of that again, Arts. Hangs that right foot out, little slide of that back wheel as he went through there. And see uh, Emmons, uh, how he takes that one again, just hangs that right foot out. I always say it's a great demonstration for anyone watching on how to tackle. You know, what the way you watch this, go out, you know, try things on the, on your course, try things when you're training and riding. Yeah, def definitely. Yeah. You know, getting it wrong is the best way of, of learning to do it right. So um, practice everything, try every different bit of technique and... You know, if, if someone else is doing something differently to you, try it. If it, uh, if it works out great, if, it, uh, if it's faster than the way you were doing it, then, then obviously you've gained something. If it's not, then you can always go back to what you were doing before. So um, always, I think it's always, w whether it's, it's cyclocross, road racing, track racing, it's always worth looking at what other riders are doing and how they're doing it and kind of going, does, would that relate to, to me riding? Or could I use that particular skill in in the way that i ride my bike or or, or not um so you're never too old to learn are you no not at all um wessex cyclocross league checking in thanks i was going to come and ride tomorrow but i've got to commentate now i've got a world cup to do tomorrow uh brooke watts checking in thanks brooke for uh saying hi converting, converting maggie oh turn arts goes down onto the knees full wheel dirt he's been he's been dicey he's been playing <laughs> yeah. with the devil on that descent hasn't he for the whole race so far yeah he definitely has it's uh so far, until that time, managed to keep it upright, but it's definitely very difficult to stop the bike just in time to get around that post down there. And uh, so we see Lone Svik here, his uh, rider right, dismounts on the other side of the bike, so it works out a little bit better for him, grabs a hold of the... <laughs> Let's take you through that one. So he's been that he's had that that right foot in down onto the knees and the slide. That's what uh, this sort of cross condition does. Puts the bike down, goes into uh, the pits for a bike change. Gets his Belgian champions trek this time as he as he goes through there. Proper, again, uh, when you're when you're trying that lap after lap after lap, when you've got. 70 riders that are going through one lap that line's fine the next lap you go through uh, on conditions like this all of a sudden that someone's gouged out a different uh, a different groove yeah they have um but i don't, I don't actually think tuna has lost an awful lot of a uh, lot of time on that particular slide there because uh, he sort of kept the bike with him kept on um, sliding somewhat in the right direction and uh, 
and got himself off very quickly. So we've seen riders before slide down the sets. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. quick as light, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, Cordy Van Kessel going in there today? There's your leader, Turn Arts. If you're just joining us, welcome aboard. This is the Telenet Super Prestige Series from uh, Boehm. And you have Turn Arts here from the Telenet Barwas Lions. The Belgian national champion is your leader. Coming to the back end of uh, this race today, Tim Malia going through here for the Creafin team. Right, still uh, on those Stevens bikes are the uh, Creafin team. Thanks all of you for getting on board over on our chat forums. Here's this rider riding away uh, now to uh, victory today. Tone Arts is looking good in this one, trying to make up for that unshipped chain uh, last week when he got on to his teammate and Elias a bit. Uh, quite a few people as well on the forums just asking mm. again. Tone Arts going absolutely full gas today with a, with a World Cup tomorrow. Yeah, well, he's, he's a rider who usually tends to, to back up very well and, and do uh, double crosses in, and where he's almost better the second day. And some riders are like that. They, pref they, they actually need a raise in, the, in their body to, to ride well the next day. Uh, other riders prefer coming in 100% fresh into to a race. And, uh, you know, it's also coming down to what your team needs you to do. So, um, you know, the um, Tornauts definitely seems to be one rider who's very happy to race a lot. It's, yeah, some riders, some riders feel the legs act. One race one day wakes the legs up for the next day, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's definitely like that. And, and also sometimes if you've got super fresh legs, you tend to ride a little bit um, more sort of over aggressively. Um, and, and also it, it just means that you're making, you're making efforts where you don't, don't not necessarily need to. If you've got slightly heavy legs, you think twice before you make those efforts and when you make them and how you do them. And in that way, you ride smarter because uh, uh, you're, not, you're not right on your top of your game. So I, I, for me, it was always I preferred to be sort of 90, 97, 98% fresh in terms of my physical condition, but 100% in the head. And then that made for a better, better equation rather than if I was 100% everywhere then I just I just went you were doing little s sort of stupid moves that that you didn't necessarily need to do just because you felt like you had them and yeah. by the time you got to the, towards the, the 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 pointy end of the bike race then uh, you'd done too much so turn arts pressing on here leading thanks all of you for saying hi Arnold Yo from Singapore thanks for saying hi uh, Derek Maguire shout out to the North Tyneside riders good luck in your uh, site Northeast Cyclocross League tomorrow and uh, Aldo uh, Palacios enjoying it. I'm just, I think last winter as well, we came through and we had so, as we said, pretty much grass crits all, all winter. But this is this is why we love cross, isn't it? These, uh, these conditions uh, today. I think the, yeah. uh, the European winter definitely lending itself to, to cyclocross uh, this winter. Yeah, it, it's um, it's a lot more to me anyway, and enjoyable to watch uh, cyclocross when 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 it's these kind of conditions. This is what we we love to see the the, the, the muddy warriors battle, battling out there on and and sort of racing each other as much as they're racing the calls and uh, their, their equipment as well. So you're testing everything to its limits. Um, and to me, that, that's what cyclocross is all about. I'm looking forward to hear the battle between Pidcock and Swake for the last for this spot on the podium here, because I think I think Pidcock can get on the podium. That's my prediction. Now. Yeah, I think so too, and I think um, that would have been his target at the start of uh, of today's race to to, to podium. So um, he, he's going to keep on fighting on this one. He's not too far off Swake there now. You can see that British champions jersey. The, well, uh, under what's left of it? <laughs> yeah, the under 23 world's champion, and uh, Tonart's on that climb, really nailing that one now. So settling into his ride, you see that two knee slide down that descent um, has uh, not done too much to dent his uh, advantage over the rest of the riders in uh, this one. See how he takes this one here. This one's somewhat easier to, to manage, but just looking at the lines that he's taken, he's gone slightly wider than uh, a lot of the other riders around that, that bend and just carries a bit more speed around the, the, the corner and then kicks into the next steep little, uh, little ramp. Again, that's what you've got to do. And you look at you look at Tom, you look at Tone, you look at 
um, all these riders. Your cross in these conditions has to be adaptable, doesn't it? You do your pre-ride, you do your course ride, and you're like, yeah, that line there is fine. But you see, as the race goes on, and that's a good lesson for anyone watching who races cross, that it, your line ch can change every single lap. You've got to adapt the way you're riding, the way you're tackling different obstacles sometimes. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. And, and, and also, like this what looks to be the slow line can sometimes be the faster line um, and, and a lot of the time you find riders just just going for the, the sort of the, the road apex which um, you know gets cut up quite quickly but if you then sort of start looking around the um, thinking slightly outside the box and looking around yourself and you can see that some of the some of the, 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 the turns have actually got more grip on the outside and if you can take a slightly longer line but carrying a lot more speed then the overall um, net gain is going to be that you're, you're faster and, and that's that's what you're looking at and that's why it's so important to raise the cause as much as it is, as it is to raising the op opponents around you. It's something that you used to talk a lot about is that taking the ski line through a corner going long and cutting back across yeah. corners? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's necessary to do that, and you know, certain certain riders have got obviously you've got different technique and different size of rider. It also changes the, the the line that you take through corners um, and and so on. So it's it's just about finding what works for you all of the time and, and working on that. So it's just gone down. It's uh, dropped his chain as well, and this is uh, oh. definitely good for Pidcock. So Swake went down. You just saw him uh, dump himself on the bottom of that uh, descent there just as Pidcock was hand-slinging himself around the corner on the uh, the top section of that one. So Pidcock now is uh, through for the podium here. Just You can see him just trying to manage that line. You can see leaning into the left there. Here's Arts uh, again on the, the descent where he did a double knee slide on the previous time round. Went a bit so. better then. <laughs> Indeed, he's just controlling that one. He's, he's kind of, it looks like he's almost sort of put that one wheel, uh, one footed descent uh, to bed for the moment. Yeah, he, he has, but it's also, they're, they're not trying to ride his next part as much as they were a couple of laps ago. Obviously, it's been cut up a little bit more. You've lost some of the traction, and the, the descent is too slippery to actually get around that corner on your bike. Um, just needs a bit more patience around that. So Pidcock is in up to third and out. And uh, Swake, where is Swake? What has happened on that bike? Where are you be looking for the pit? So he's, he's lost, lost a lot. A, I was just going to say he's lost a lot of time here. So just trying to get that one back. Has he managed to uh, remount? Does he have another problem as soon as he gets back on here? can see he's lost a considerable amount of time. Again, you've got to get through the gears. Having a look down at the bike. I think um, the uh, the electronic gearing that is is running has basically got itself into crash mode. He's in uh, the hardest gear that he's got on that bike, and he can't get get out of it. So it's just uh, he needs to get a new bike fairly quickly here now to, uh, to to get some gears that work for him. They have to reset that, get it out of the crash protection mode, and uh, um, get it get it a good clean. Does so just powering through here. He's still on the uh, gets into the pits now. Uh, his shoe is gone as well. So needs a new shoe as well. Goes through uh, there, needs a shoe. Where well, the uh, mechanics are looking for that one. Let's have a look, we haven't seen a shoe change. See how quickly he manages to get that one in. Laurent Swake here, goes on. And again, triathlon style, he's gonna do it up as he rides. Yeah, obviously getting back onto the bike is uh, it's, it's faster to, to get the uh, the shoe done up. But um, we haven't seen seen it a couple of times in the past where, where riders said uh, that the buckles and, and um, the system, the closure systems uh, have, have gone on the shoes and um, it, riders didn't in the past to have too, too many of them didn't have uh, spare shoes in the pits but nowadays everyone carries a spare second, spare pair of shoes. It's something that road riders have been doing uh, at least since, since I got onto the professional scene on, in, in road you always had a spare pair of shoes in uh, in the car just in case you came down and you broke your shoe you could get a, a, another shoe on and, and continue finishing the race whereas in cross it didn't seem to happen in the past but now over the last couple of years um, it's definitely changed so Pidcock again you can see how tight how muddy it's getting on the other side of the the planks there Airman's just in front of him and also you can see they're starting to get a bit more fatigued and not riding as many sections as they used to um, in, in about a lap or two ago so the, the legs are getting heavy and if you're not carrying the speed into those hurdles then 
then uh, you're just not going to get over them on the bikes. And that's why we see Pidcock is changing his, his technique, his tactics when he comes into these. Rode him a couple of laps when he's really making that big push, and then now he's back to, to, to running them again, which uh, you know just shows the maturity of, of Tom and how he's really changed. Because I think about a year or two ago, he would have tried to, to, to hop them every single time uh, just because he can, um, not necessarily without it being, being faster. So I think we've seen a different Tom Pitcock out here, here this year. So he is eight seconds behind Herman's last lap. So Tonarts is your leader, Quentin, uh, Quentin Herman's is second tom pidcock third uh corny van kessel in fourth we think at the moment they come through it changes uh, quite uh, considerably from time to time lars van der Haar is the rider right behind him so corny van kessel lars van der Haar is making very again very uh, nice steady progress back through the race here yeah he definitely is he uh, seems like he's also getting stronger stronger the, 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 the deeper into the race you get but um it's just missing out that early part of the race is not managing to to cope with the uh, intensity right in the in the opening couple of laps and then sort of drifts back a bit and then settles in and then finds his sort of uh, uh finds his rhythm so one lap to go swake is at 111 then comes tim malia is the rider right behind him pidcock though driving for second place behind uh, quinton urbans here so gets rid of the glasses and uh, then uh, just going through it's it, it's a mud fest out here today isn't it Gianni Vermeersh going through well compared to last year where we could see the sponsors on the every rider's jersey after every single race whereas uh, a, a day like today you, you struggle to to see anything anything they're all they're all kind of riding with the same kit on more or less yeah so it, uh, your leader uh, tone arts it's uh, looking good here for tone yeah, definitely he's still looking strong as um, like we said before this is Tunat's dream sort of conditions where it's a muddy slog all the time even better if it's a bit more running that he has to do because he's a very accomplished runner uh, especially when he's carrying his bike on his back I saw again last week the way he ran back on this is uh, Jens Adams and Tom Mewson uh, in ninth and tenth uh, that will be a good sprint for for that last week that, that long stride that he's got when he when he's off and running and uh, again has that advantage and for anyone that's in terms of looking at this in terms of training riders like Tony you have to work on that running don't you if you're going to yeah. be a, a, you know a, a cross rider at this level but short explosive runs is what what you really need to to, to train on and um, I, I guess it, it's um, everyone is different but I think if you're if you if you want to be a good cyclocross rider you you, you know that you're going to be running at, um, at certain points in your in the season and on certain certain races more than others but just having that ability to sprint up little short banks and uh, and, and being on and off the bike and, and coping with the added heart rate that that gives you because every time you jump off and start running your heart rate just shoots through the roof and then jumping back on the bike and being able to continue putting the power down it, it's, it's something that's very difficult um, so yeah they, they all practice this to a certain extent <laughs> Again, just uh, hangs that right, right foot out. Do you think, again, this could be something that might prove problematic for riders that do start to mix that really heavy road program like Van Aert and Van Der Poel in terms of, of having that time to go and run during the, during the summer months? Well, I, th I think they, def well, they definitely won't do it during the road season. It's something that um, I think every road rider has, has worked out. that running and, and cycling, <laughs> doing road riding doesn't necessarily work. Um, it, it just leaves too much of a dent in your legs to, to do your training. But as we see with Matthew van der Poel doing his last road race and then taking a bit of time off um, or away from, from racing, he, he's got enough time to sort of get his running in to, uh, to, to manage to cope with the amount of running that, 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 that currently is in, in cyclocross. Tone Arts hasn't had a victory yet this season. Second at the Jingle Cross, second at the Trek uh, in uh, cyclocross up in Waterloo. Third at the Baron Cross in Mulevika, second in the Polder Cross in Kroivika, looking for his first victory. Quentin Ehrman's behind him, then Tom Pidcock, again, as uh, he was with us last week, unshipping his chain when he just got onto the leading group and he was looking good for that one. But uh, Tone Arts here has, uh, goes back to our chasers. Ehrman's, uh, again, very different in terms of the cadence of these two. Yeah, it is very different, but. Uh, 
Tom Pitcos is looking very strong here. He's actually going going really well up this climb. If he can, if he can put this final bit together here as well now and get it get it right, then uh, he's got a chance of getting back on to to Hermans. But um, certainly at the moment looking very very good for uh, for a podium. Is indeed so the Trinity Racing rider he just saw him dig his right elbow in there onto the uh, the, the barrier at the top. On this descent, Ehrmans as well. Again, he can't make any mistakes here or Pidcock will be right on him. The same goes for the British champion behind. So just a nice <laughs> one knee slide there for Tom Pidcock on that one. You're seeing absolutely everything here on this. That was very quick <laughs> as well, the way he did that, got around that corner. I think he, he made up a, a, another second or two on, on, uh, on Hermans in front of him. I think we're going to do an epic montage of slides, I think, <laughs> at the end of this one. I think that'd be good. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll, we'll put that that one together for next week. It's the full rock and roll slide of, of two and hours earlier versus uh, Pitcock's one knee slide. And I don't know. That was, a, <laughs> that was a one knee slide across the kind of across the dance floor. That one wasn't it? It's like when you see little kids at weddings, isn't it? That are sliding across the dance floor on their knees. <laughs> yeah. This battle behind for the podium between Ammons oh, and Pitcock is close. really lighting up. Can Tom Pidcock get back on here? Ammons behind. He's been pressing on throughout this one. Pidcock roads again. Very early on, you look at the way he's just got quicker and quicker and stronger and stronger. A very mature, very measured race at the British Champions race so far. Very much so, very much so. Really impressed with Tom today. So your leader and he's just about back on. Here's the battle for the podium. Who's going to take second? Who's going to take third? Pitcock uses that goes through onto the inside hangs that right foot out Hermans recognizes the danger of this again you've got a battle a real boxing match is going left and right between these two Pitcock oh catches the shoulder on that uh, big stake they don't move either those not so much no definitely not that was a bit of a mistake there now but it's coming into uh, the final little bit here is uh, is he going to manage to find his way back on again we've got those hurdles as well still to deal with left and right then again this again this comes into tactics Hermans is been running them Pidcock's been jumping them for the most part does Tom calculate and gamble and bunny hop them and see if he can take the time you're all in here well you have to I, I definitely think at this point in time it's the second place up for grabs if you manage to hurt, jump these on the bike then uh, you're going to make enough time up to uh, to actually manage to pull away there now does Tom yeah, Pidcock he's going to bunny hop them here it. he goes Pidcock, buddy hops some Airmans has got a remount. Pidcock's got the momentum. Gets back onto Airmans. Here we go. So this battle here between these two riders, great racing. I think this is one of the best races that I think I've seen from Tom Pidcock in this one. The Trinity racing rider, but Airmans, the power of Airmans on the flat. Admar still had the legs there to, to make that acceleration as he went through that last little sand pit. Here he is, the Belgian champion takes his first victory of this season. Tonarts emerges from the mud, tries to clear some of his jersey from that one. The arts, and it looks like Hermans has hung on for second. But you've got to say, hats off to these two. Respect for the battle. What a race they gave us for the podium. Tom Pidcock in third. And again, as we said, one of his best races that we've seen from him. Yeah, definitely. Um, really, really good ride. And uh, it was just that one little mistake, I think, where he got caught on that, that inside uh, stake in, uh, on, the, on the course. Um, just, just held him back. Bogart. Yes, Kurt Bogart's there, the uh, Trinity Racing Manager. You can see here's Laurent Swake. Has Swake... Uh, Picked off those riders in front of him, Malia. Here comes Corny Van Kessel through for fourth place. Lars van der Haar is making him work for this one. Great day for Telenet Bauer's Lions today. So it's fourth for Van Kessel, fifth for van der Haar. Swake should be the next rider behind them. Look at that, 48 seconds. And again, as you, as you said, Maggie, just that, just caught that shoulder on that big stake. Pat on the back there from Lars van der Haar. Great battle that they gave. What a shame for this guy. Uh, what a race that he'd given us. Uh, one of the most popular riders out there. Yeah, definitely. He, uh, you know, he, he looked strong out there all race, but um, just that that one crash, that mechanical that he ended up having, having because of it, um, is what ended up costing him a, a, a better placing than what, what he's got. But that's that's cyclocross, and that's why what we love the sport. You've got to be. 100% all the time. Um, just small mistakes are okay, big mistakes not so much. Now here's Tim Merlier, it comes through for seventh place. So uh, what a race, absolutely phenomenal race that that gave us today here in Bohm. We said that conditions uh, would make it a great race. Here's Gianni Vermeersch 
Here's the next rider. So he had a, had a win in the mud in Ardoi. So he's uh, just almost two minutes down here. What a great uh, race. I hope you've enjoyed that one. So we, uh, as uh, Gianni Vermeersh crosses the line, two very, very good races that we've had. As uh, Vermeersh comes in for eighth at 2.06. Jens Adams is your next rider on his own. And uh, proper, as we say, I've, I, and there was a few people asking how they get clean at the end, just get <laughs> hosed down with the pressure washer. Yeah, jet, most wash, of the time. jet washer, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> there's no other way around <laughs> it, really. Just stand there, let the mechanic jet wash you with the bike. Tom Meerson from Corrin and Circus is your 10th placed rider across the line. Uh, here's uh, Marcel Meissen uh, from Corrigan Circus. The German champion is going to be uh, just outside the top 10. He's going to be uh, 11th for Meissen. Again, he's such a solid rider, isn't he, Marcel Meissen? Yeah, he definitely is. Another rider who's had, uh, had a decent ride on the road this year. Felicitaties, natuurlijk. Speelt dat een rol in de race? Got Tone Art. extra motivatie uit, of is het eerder iets dat je achteraf meeneemt? I don't think we're getting the audio on our interview for some reason. And I heard Janet and Chris Wouters say, you have not said much, because we are here today, but you said well, finally. Ja, inderdaad. Uh, het lijkt voor veel mensen dat ik nog niet op niveau ben, dat zou moeten. Maar als je de uitslagen uiteindelijk beter gaat bekijken, blijkt wel dat ik altijd meedoe voor het podium en zelfs ja, net niet mee kan doen voor de overwinningen, maar we met uitzonderlijke uh, Iserbiet zitten. Um, vorige week had ik even goed kunnen meedoen tot in de finale, denk ik. Dat lukt dan niet, dan zijn eigenlijk een hele week wat gefrustreerd toch wel. Uh, en dan is het wachten tot vandaag. En het waren lange dagen, donderdag en vrijdag, dat ik moest rusten. Maar vandaag kan ik nog een winning pakken, dat is heel leuk. Plus so, uh, u ook een zak in het klassement natuurlijk, want die zijn mij voor me. Ik heb uh, voor, uh, vooraf zei tegen mij, ik heb wel punten in te halen, dat is bij deze gebeurd. Ja, ik denk dat het altijd toch iets beter is om uh, de eerste wedstrijd iets te laten vallen. Mede door pech nu op dit moment, uh, vorige week dan. En dan te weten dat je een heel seizoen verder moet en dat je niks meer moet laten liggen dan dat je een heel seizoen uh, maar zo wat wat gaat rondfietsen en een tijdelijk je middelkerke punten laten liggen. Ik denk dat ik nu goed gemotiveerd moet zijn om elke super prestige cross uh, goed aan te vatten, want sinds vandaag kan ik ook super prestige crossen winnen. Inderdaad, ook daarvoor gefeliciteerd. Je bent nu de enige naast Tom Meusen in dit huidige peloton dan tenminste. Uh, ja, van kop tot een hang je onder de modder. Het was een zwaar parcours, het uh, was een zware wedstrijd. Neem jullie dit mee naar morgen? Ja, toch wel waarschijnlijk. Uh, ik verwacht nu morgen ook wel een zware cross. En omdat het vandaag lastig was, zullen we morgen niet heel explosief zijn. De renners die vandaag in de start stonden. Maar omdat het morgen niet zo heel snel zal zijn, verwacht en hoop ik toch. Uh, denk ik dat dat zeker niet nodig moet zijn. Misschien wel ten opzichte van Elie Iserbiet die dan extra heeft kunnen sparen. Maar verder was, denk ik, waren de meeste renners hier wel aanwezig en verwacht ik wel een gelijke strijd. Wordt het een rit of een vlucht? Uh, ik ga met het vliegtuig en het zijn vooral de mechaniekers en mijn vader die een uh, lange nacht moet gaan. Goeie recuperatie gewenst, Tom. Proficiat. Dank u. Maggie speaks about seven languages, by the way, so uh, nice to be able to uh, hit you there. I've been, I've, I've felt the, the got to love, uh, got to love a onesie at a cross race. Oh, definitely. I've been working hard. I've, I've got my, I've got, a, I found a something on YouTube. It's got eight hours of Dutch, <laughs> which you're supposed to put on while you sleep. And okay. I've also found a, a Flemish one as well, because it's pronunciation, very similar languages, different pronunciations. Yeah. So I am working on it. I promise. Here's our highlights. Let's take it through. So Quinton Ailments of uh, Telenet Bar was Lions. Van Kessel, Tone Arts, you can see there, Tim Malia, as that race, uh, the day went on. And uh, telling it about was Lions at the front, you can see Laurent Swake coming through. Tom Pidcock at this point was just, uh, you can see him just coming around the bottom of your uh, the picture there. Onto this one, Swake looking strong for Pal Sows and Bingo. Again, it, this was the point, uh, again, Tone Arts just pressing, pressing all the time, just as Tom Pidcock was about to get on. Yeah, I mean, he made his move just as Pitcock got there, and I think that's, that's um, you know, Tom had to pay a little bit for that, and, um, you know, that's why I think he, he really found it quite hard on, over the, uh, the next lap or so, and uh, and then found his way again, found found his way back into the race as uh, every single time on this descent, the, the, the guys were having to sort of a, the, deploy the best uh, technique and skills that they have to st even stay remotely on their feet or, or let alone on, on their wheels. But um, like uh, things were going away from Tom Pitcock for a bit there until Loudon Swig had that issue crashed. 
broke his shoe, had some issues with his bike. Yeah, little shoe change there for uh, Laurent Swake. Got it back though, and again, it's it's a season-long competition. Points yeah. mean prizes, don't they? You, and this battle, left and right, look at this. Yeah, it was a, a really good battle, and Tom just going around the, just, Ooh. Ooh, just clipped that, that, that stake in the ground a bit too hard, and I think that's what cost him, and hopefully that hasn't left too much of a, of a bruise on Tom. And there you have it, there's your winner. What a, again, you can see the face there, Quentin Hermans. Yeah, it's been a heavy race out there, hard race. Tom Pitcock definitely uh, showing the signs of it. Yeah, indeed. Here's your top 10 on the day here in Bohemia. Tone Arts, Quentin Hermans, Pitcock, Van Kessel, Van der Haas, Swaik, Malir, Vermeersch, Adams, and Mayusen is your top 10. Do that because they almost always put it up for a nanosecond. You know, they ex <laughs> <laughs> expect us to just uh, bash through that one as quickly as possible. But uh, again, Tone Arts, uh, I love all the fan clubs that we see around. You see all those sort of big sublimated flags because oh, each yeah. rider in their hometown, there's normally a bar, isn't there, that has a fan club. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's part of Belgian culture, isn't it? It, it? it is a cycling culture, whether you turn up at a, at a Kermesse race for road racing or whether it's, uh, it's cyclocross. Every rider has got their, their own sort of fan club set up and uh, got a couple of, couple of thousand members in it from every town sort of gets behind their rider. There you have it. So they're on there. So there's a giraffe, the tiger. It's a bit early for the. It's a bit early for the man in red, though. I think I'm not even <laughs> saying the word because I, I. I know. Yeah. I know Keith McRae on. Uh, he'll be on Twitter if I say if I say the, uh, the 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 c word already. Um, the man in red there. Uh, happy birth. Is that happy birthday, Kurt? There, yeah. he's 50. Yeah. Give it is. the birthday shout outs here on uh, GCN Racing, and uh, oh, that that must be Kurt there. Um, they were uh, celebrating the, the birthday today. <coughs> what a race. What a race say, that was. Back with us, back with us here. Um, that, that had a little bit of everything. You've got to say that race. It, well, it definitely did. It definitely did. It was, uh, was on it from the start. And uh, yeah, lots of... I think that the, the, the fact that it was so muddy and so slippery uh, just really made it from, to, to proper cyclocross that we've been waiting for. And um, yeah, really... Obviously, solid outcome from two nuts, and uh, he's looking very strong. And I think uh, he'll be a man to sort of be reckoned with for for tomorrow's World Cup as well. When you come into season, we said he he's, he's been second, he's been third. For someone like him, it, you know that getting that all important first victory, it the, it it's it, you know for him now, it just lift him a little bit for tomorrow. Yeah, I think it definitely will do. Confidence is everything. But um, as he said in his interview as well, he's he's sort of been there. He's been consistently on the podium uh, right at the very start of the season. But it's taken him until now to to get that win. He hasn't been too worried about it. It's just been he's been resting up a little bit more now, and in the last week or so leading into to this double headed weekend with the important Super Prestige and important World Cup tomorrow, and and he kind of feels like he's he's actually getting his legs on and the fact that he said the conditions for tomorrow looks like they're going to be brutal again it's going to be wet it's going to be muddy <laughs> slower bike race means that you don't necessarily need to have that super sharpness uh it's not so many sort of uh, quick accelerations out of corners as, as you would have on a dry race and and with that he said racing double weekend not a really a big deal for him. No, so the World Cup is in Bern in Switzerland tomorrow. We do have it to some territories. Um, so check your uh, availability on that one. TV rights is quite a complicated thing. Uh, in terms of racing, what's coming up? We've got the Etias Cross in Berrigan next Saturday. Again, there are some geo restrictions on that one to the US. US unfortunately, their organisers did a multi-year deal with someone in the US. So someone's got that. But we are back um, for Gavara for the Super Prestige uh, next weekend as well. And don't forget the new uh, Cyclocross podcast that mm. uh, Jeremy Powers has uh, been working hard on I do feature a little bit in that one <laughs> as well we have a good we have a good little catch up uh, good. each week on that quite a lot of chat over on the chat forums as well about Ellie a bit and yep. uh, targeting the World Cup and and you would say after those two victories in in the US you've got to get to that point especially as a young rider yep. um, where you go actually that's my focus I want to win the World Cup well look the super prestige is important, especially as a Belgian. It's it's really important. Um, but the World Cup is the World Cup, and as a young rider coming doing his first full season as uh, as an elite rider, rather than doing some under twenty three stuff and 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 uh, some elite stuff, 
full season of, un, of of elite he wants that world cup on on you know on his palmares and with that now he's got two wins in in the opening two world rounds of the world cup he wants to continue and build on that and if he could pull off another big one tomorrow um before we even got the likes of uh, Mathieu van der Poel coming in i think he's he's standing a really good chance of actually winning that um that that world cup series and uh, yeah i think he's doing the right thing in targeting and as a younger rider Although when I say younger rider, he's, he's <laughs> you know I think he's 24 years old now, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know it it's still having to to work out what how many race days can he do, and what's the what's the added implication of running all of the um, elite races rather than 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 the under 23 races as well. So managing your calendar is really important, and I think picking some series to do. Uh, and one that you're really focusing on is, is absolutely key for him. And as we as we said in commentary, we've got this kind of presence now that sits over yeah. across it in Matthew in Matthew Vanderpool, and we're waiting for him to come back in. In terms of the riders that went away from last season, and they might have put in a really really heavy summer, and now he's not coming back in till sort of November, and they're still wondering how they're going to be going against him. Looking at Tone Arts and Elise a bit, how, what's your what's your thoughts? Well, <laughs> that's, that's it's a million dollar question. It is it? a million dollar question. Yeah, and I and I wish I had the right answer for it, but uh, I think if Van der Poel is taking this seriously and he said he's not going to do as many cross races as he did last year, I think he did just over thirty bike races, cross races last year, um, because he's got a, a, an important sort of spring season on the road. He's got the mountain bike uh, Olympic Games next year. He wants to make sure that he gets to the Olympics fresh. So he's going to do a smaller program, but I still think when he's on the start line, he will be the man to beat. Um, but yeah, it, it's obviously going to be interesting to see the, 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 the younger riders who sort of, it's kind of left the door open a bit for, for them to sort of start raising each other, start pushing on the game. Because I think when whenever Matthew van der Poel was, was on the start line, everyone else was kind of racing for second or third. And depending on whether World Van Aert was on the start line as well, and and with that it meant meant that sort of they never really raced each other, and it's always different when you're racing for the win compared to when you're racing for third or fourth or whatever you know whatever battle you end up with. It's a different mindset that that you're entering. So the fact that the door has been left open for 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 these guys to really battle it out for the for the wins in these um, in these races that we've had so far. Um, I think it just pushes on the sport a bit again. So I think they, they would have stepped up a level and the sport will have stepped up a level. And uh, yeah, it will, it will be if, if Matthew comes back in for Koppen, Koppenberg Cross, which is what he said he's going to do. Um, it hasn't always been his favourite race. Um, let's see what, what happens. And that was his only off day, you would say, last yeah, winter. Yeah, he did have an off day. He? <laughs> <laughs> he did have one. And in terms of looking at looking at last winter as well, because we talk about the conditions that we had today in particular, so muddy, so heavy. Yeah. This race last year, again, was a bit of like a grass criteria, and we had a lot of them. But again, looking at that, I mean, his everything went was just it was just a sweet spot he looked like he was in a bubble the, the yeah. bike was the bike was fine everything was fine but when you add conditions like this you add the mud you add tone arts sliding down there on his knees tom pidcock doing a bit of a you know rock slide on, on one knee one foot yeah. but when you add in conditions like that it's 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 for anyone that's used to cross they'll know this but if you're new to cross it changes it because all of a sudden you saw their swakes gears go or you yeah. you put the bike down gear side down in the mud and you've got to run to the run to the pits it does change things doesn't it yeah of course it does uh, and and that's that's what we love about the sport the fact that it is still relatively although you got uh, we've had a couple of riders mainly two riders sort of dominating the sport over the last three or four years now um it's still it's still opening up that door for people to if the rider has an off day or if you know there are sort of the mistakes being made then the, the chance is there for you to take it so uh, I'm I'm looking forward to to the rest of 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 the season and uh, when Macho gets back in again, it would be interesting to see how how he's going on cross because uh, I think we found out that Wout van Aert wasn't finding it all that easy having done the road season, uh, sort of last road season, and and then going into cross um, in the last cross season, uh, it kind of found himself a little bit off the pace. It was a little bit more. Uh, sluggish for the want of a better word in mm. in terms of uh, his ex accelerations it was he's, he'd done so much so much different training to what he was used to before when he was just targeting cross 
Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what, what Van der Poel uh, will be like after having done a, a big season of road and mountain bike racing. Yeah, definitely. If we get the podium, I'll, uh, the riders will be uh, cleaning themselves, uh, getting themselves cleaned up if we uh, if we get the podiums. Um, we'll bring you the podiums now. Here you go. So uh, there you have it. Second place for uh, Quinton Ehrmans from Telenet Bawa's Lions. There's Tom Pidcock, all cleaned up in a white jersey yeah. now for the <laughs> Trinity Racing Team. But a, a really, really solid, very, very mature ride from Tom today. Yeah, definitely. I t totally agree with that. Um, it, it looked good all the time, and uh, I think he's going he's gonna to end up having a good season. If he can keep himself... Um, rubber side down injury free then you know this is this is looking like a good season for him yeah indeed there's your winner two knots onto the podium the winner today an important victory you would say for the belgian national champion so uh big smiles from uh two knots if you were with us last year um we uh, we managed to catch up with tune at various points throughout the season hopefully we'll be able to to do that again so uh, there you have it there's your one two three so uh, two knots quentin hermans and uh, tom pidcock from uh, the trinity racing team as it is now and again that all important uh, sponsor on the hat of uh, tom pidcock it was a it was a special moment i was there i did have a bit of a fanboy moment as i, <laughs> I said last year with danny mccaskill i was there at that moment when danny mccaskill presented tom with his with his new uh, red bull helmet it was it was yeah. quite quite a special moment but a great day's racing i uh, hope you enjoyed that don't forget check out our uh, new uh, cyclocross podcast from magnus backstead and myself martin mcdonald we'll see you again next week bye for now <laughs>